It's the Bob and Tom Show. Who's wearing pants? I was until I heard that song. Oh, yeah. Christy, what are you, what are you sporting today? Uh, yoga pants. I'll All tell you right. this. I'm a fan. She's uh, she's filthy. She's a dirty girl. Yeah, I didn't wash my hair today. There it is. She already told me that. Her hair looks yeah. great. I go, yeah, I didn't wash it today. Dirty leg. Yeah. <laughs> dirty, dirty, leg dirty, right. dirty leg. There's Pat Godwood. Hey, Chick McGee. He's over there in the... COVID studio. We keep them over there. We don't want to catch. Uh, we don't want to catch COVID. We're, have, our, have our fingers crossed for a vaccine. There's. A, and if you know about the vaccine, don't tell back because we've told them there, we have no possible sure. hope. <laughs> There's Josh Arnold. Hello. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick, and here's Tom. That was the great band. Here come the mummies, in their classic pants. Uh, certainly a fine, fine song. Not a lot of songs written about trousers, but no. uh, that's really one of the best. Trousers. Uh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Trousers. Slacks. Slacks. Word I don't really use that often. Okay, you're sitting around. You go, uh, you think to yourself, I'm going to go I'm gonna go shop for a pair of pants. That's how I would put it. Mm. So then do you announce, darling, I'm going to go shop for some slacks. No. I'm, no. I'm going to go buy some pants. Or trousers. She would make so much fun of you if you said yeah, so. Darling, I don't use. I, that's not one of mine. Uh, what do you use, babe? Sweetie, love, probably. Sweetie, baby. Uh, baby. Hey, uh, hey, Burden. 
Oh, there you go. There I'm going to go. go. First, that's good. Uh, that, thank you, Chick. Uh, what's again coming Did from I mention I'm about half as far as feeling uh, okay? Yeah. You know that, right? Uh, Chick McGee lives alone. I think we yeah. Yeah. established that. I grew up here in Slacks. Let's see. I, never, I never heard anything but your pants. Dad, your dad My mom said, said it all oh. the time. Hmm. Yeah. Go put on your Sunday Slacks. Really? So, yeah. so Slacks meant more formal. My parents were very For young. the most part. And when they had me, there was uh, they were uh, seventeen and eighteen. Jesus! And uh, wow, yeah, it was brother and sister. I don't want to get into that. Oh, anyway, boy. oh, they weren't brother and no, sister. No, 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 no. no that, was, that was the parenting. You're not helping. <laughs> well, I want to make it clear that you. So you, my dad you, you, never you. said pants or, or trousers or slacks. He always said pants, mm. and he would he would. Uh, Bunch up the uh, the cuff around his ankle and make it because he was it. he was kind of a grease a greaser yeah greaser yeah go with the Z I'm sorry grease greaser or greaser I, I, was, I go with an S sound <laughs> That's he looked like he just walked off the set of grease is what I'm saying yeah, yeah a couple the of the pictures jeans, I saw he yeah. definitely white yeah. t-shirt yeah. Yeah, a couple, cuff jeans had the thing in the front with yeah, the curls the yeah. Superman the Superman yeah. curl Did he roll his smokes up in his he sleeve? would uh, roll his camel yeah. on filters up in his sleeve. Yikes. We have a lot okay. of common. That was a, a, a look, an era. Sure. In the sure 50s. Um, I didn't realize you, he was only 18 when you were born. Oh, yeah. Well, no wonder they didn't know what they were doing. Oh, hell no. What, <laughs> did, did you? Did you <laughs> when did you think they did? <laughs> and my mom chewed gum a lot and said, Mister. I like, hey, Mister. Okay, I made that part of it. <laughs> okay. You guys weren't believing me. <laughs> I believed it. Now, uh, you missed a number of interesting stories. I yesterday. was gone a couple hours. What do you want? Well, I, a couple good ones. And uh, one I, I, uh, I'll i just review quickly with you. Although, you guys, did you know that if you go to YouTube and, and search Bob and Tom, and uh, when we're on the air, like 6 to 10 Eastern, it, it pops up there. Those cameras are hooked up. Yeah. There pops right up on YouTube. Yeah. I, I had no idea. So you went home and watched what you should be doing? Yeah, and uh, every time Ace talked, I went... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. He didn't hear me, but... I think that means we have to do a bonus Ace Cosby joke of the day. Son of a bitch. Back right in. Uh, the story I wanted, I mentioned because I had a technical question. Yeah. Okay, so this guy's in prison in Arizona. He gets or, released from prison. Because he wants to bone you? And he uh, he steals a, uh, a, big a tractor trailer that happens to have, what was it, Christine? Ten like? Corvettes in it. Brand new ones. So the thing's worth... 1.25 million or something? Yeah, I, probably more. In any event, it's I have it right very here. valuable. Um, and then he uh, is uh, pretty much immediately arrested. Um, and it's kind of a he uh, apparently got into a conversation with the driver of this this rig, and then grabs the guy, throws him out, and drives off, mm -hmm. and tells police he did it because he he needed to get home. Yep. So my question is, now the guy's obviously got an issue, so it's he's going to be going back to prison. So my question is, does he go back to the same prison, and then does he get his old cell? Um, I think, first of all, uh, I I would challenge you uh, to uh, differentiate between uh, different cells in a prison. They're pretty, all pretty much the same. No, but I mean, does he get... I guess a corner unit would be prized, I would think. Yeah. Probably. What, do you think yeah. he left his posters up? What are you talking about? Yeah, I'm kind of, is this <laughs> like my Rita Hayworth poster? Is this Who like, took that? Is this like when you're a kid and you go off to school and you come back and your mom's turned your... Well, uh, your your room's the sewing room now. What? That's so, about valid points. It's like they don't have like high housekeeping like in a hotel where the maid comes in and... So, no. I think they kind of do. Don't the prisoners grab all the sheets... And then they wash them all, and then but, that's a certain. Those are certain prisoner jobs to sure. clean out the cells. Yeah, that's hmm. true. So what I'm saying is, so when he got back, does he get his old roommate? Well, also we don't know where this happened. Did it happen in the same county? Does it? I, I mean, oh, so you mean he he's, he, he might be in waiting a, in a county jail while he goes back to, or okay. he may have been in a prison in a different area of the state. I mean, when he gets back to the prison. Hey, where's Spike? Oh, he's yeah. by the way, he's got a new roommate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking. Because there were 10 cars in the tractor trailer, he's been charged with 11 counts of, thie of theft of thievery. <laughs> oh, so. Yeah. Grand, the Grand Theft Auto? Yeah, basically. Oh, so they counted the truck? They counted yep. the truck and the 10 cars. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. And the guy says, I just wanted the truck. Yeah, he I didn't, didn't know the I didn't, didn't know those know. cars were in there. Well, I can't blame him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. He just wanted to get going, apparently. He wanted to get home. Wanted never, been, never been a Corvette fan. Uh, 
But why didn't he just ask for a ride? I don't understand yeah, he that. Beat up the driver, didn't he? Threw him out of the car. Well, yeah, he yeah. threw him out. Of the, he, yeah. he befriended him. Probably and didn't threw have him the app for Uber. Uh, in any event, I'm just curious if he'll end up with the same. If you go to the same prison, how that works? Hmm. Be just, just, just asking. I'm not sure if anybody knows that out there. Um, uh, Somebody <laughs> asked me: uh, Do the famous uh, criminals do they have their prison number retired? When that's funny. Oh, that's when a... they're, <laughs> you know, like that's was Dahmer point. like nine three four seven six eight, and that's in the rafters. Well, would yeah. you want? And would you want that number? And, and yeah, they would. Uh, I would think you. So would let me to... get. Let me visualize. Yeah. That. So you walk in the prison yard, right? And... No, not in the yard. It's inside. It's inside the facility. But right. But you can have it outside. Cafeteria. Like, something. It depends right. if it's an indoor or outdoor stadium. I think you have. You have if it's like uh, the traditional sports thing. You've got right. the Hall of Fame or the Ring of Honor, whatever mm -hmm. it might be. Sure. You're right. Retire their number. That's Put them up good, there. Yeah. That's another great question. Dahmer's up there. No. Right. <laughs> sure. I we have Capone. Capone. Uh, yeah, Dahmer. The Night uh, Stalker yeah. guy. Oh, oh yeah. Ramirez. 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 Oh, we could do this all day. Bundy. Bundy. Yeah. Bundy. yeah. Bundy. yeah. Ooh, he was wow. Huge in the. Mm. Is there a hall? Is there a criminal hall of fame? Oh, Martha oh, Stewart, absolutely. <laughs> Martha yeah. Stewart, yeah, there's like a macabre hall of fame or something. There, uh, oh, I would oh, think there's bunches. Of well, oh, um, uh, we also have an update on that. Uh, by the way, so it, it kind of in sporting news, the uh, Mankini guy from Australia. We have an update yeah, on this, that story. This is and not. This is not not needed. It, uh, <laughs> you say, he's, he's, in he all fairness, he was naked on uh, the back of a horse yeah. trying to make a joke. Okay. Um, yep. We were worried that he was. Gonna, he was worried. Uh, we gonna, have something. Uh, uh, Again, for the second time in a month, we have a story coming up in which Chick B will, will be doing one of his famous impressions. I'm not going to tell him which one it is, but when it happens, I guarantee he will do it. So well, it better not be the diaper one, I'll tell you that. No, it's not. Uh, that story's up. Did you know that story was coming back? I don't think it is. I think you like the diaper story as no. well. It might be coming back. The story is back today. Uh, here's the headline. Um, adult diaper spa denied zoning permit in New Hampshire. So uh, we'll be uh, getting back really? to that one. Yeah. I just didn't increase enough palms, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll find out what's going on there. Now, um, it's time to check in with you boys and uh, the latest in the world of delightful food from Popeye's. It's finally happened after 52 long years. The uh, A couple Sundays ago when they had the world's biggest uh, professional football game in the history of the world. Fans everywhere experience the perfect pairing. A Popeye's commercial during that big game about their new lineup of wings, Josh. That's exactly right. Have you guys heard what the lineup is? It's incredible. What is Murderer's it? Murderer's Row, they call it. It's so, so good. Sweet and spicy, ghost pepper, signature hot, honey barbecue, and roasted garlic parmesan. I think I'll start with one honey barbecue, mm. and then I'll have a roasted mm. garlic parmesan, and then... Sure, wings and football go hand in hand, but guess what? Football's on a bit of a hiatus, isn't it? Yep. You're going to have to watch other things while you enjoy your Popeye's wings. Maybe, um, oh, I don't know. Hockey? That's right! March Woo! Madness? How about that? Uh, baseball? Oh, they, 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 spring training baseball, Tom. NBA still going on? Sure. Heck yeah, it's out there. The finals in June, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and... September now. Uh, about your cousin's cornhole tournament? A lot of games. How about a movie night with Popeye's wings? Uh, it's just amazing and delicious. You know what else you could do? When you order yourself some Popeye's wings, why not order some for the neighbors? That's right. Maybe well, they ain't made of money. What are you talking about? Oh. Well, thank goodness they're affordable. And your neighbors, haven't they earned some Popeye's wings by just living next to... Well, I know they have <laughs> by living next to me, that's for sure. I could say that same thing about me. But the point is... People love chicken wings, so order some from Popeye's today. Popeye's chicken wings for your upcoming whatever the heck it is. And thank you, Popeye's. It's about time, and we're thrilled that your wings are here. Popeye's chicken wings. Mm. And we have another big uh, big food story uh, that I think Josh is going to be extremely excited about. Is that right? Uh, yeah, we got something <laughs> very exciting coming up. Um, I, I'm not going to give you too much of a hint, but uh, it's food-related. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> All right. Well, I'm excited. Uh, oh, it's a really, it's a very nice. It's not very sandwich-related or um, entree? Cereal? Dessert-esque. Dessert okay. Also, Oh, um, a Zimbabwean currency update. In case you're holding, well, those are uh, booger boogers. In case you're, in case you're holding any, uh, and uh, uh, I don't feel well. They found a, uh, they found a that human, human leg out. somewhere. Where you'll find out where. Oh, uh, a leg lamp. Just a leg. Okay, and it's real. It's from a human, and it was found in a major metropolitan area. 
Oh, man. Wow. Was, this hmm. keeps happening. Yeah, we'll see whose it is, maybe. <laughs> this is the Bob and Tom Show. Bob and Tom. Five. This may take a while. So how'd it go, boss? He said he's heard worse. He says he's heard worse. He says he hears worse every morning. Bob and Tom in the morning. Louisville's classic rock all day on 95.7 QMF. Please forgive us. It does smell like barbecue sauce. Yeah, there is barbecue sauce. Christy made us meatloaf. I'm terrified. Um, we were, we're celebrating Joe Day. Oh, yeah. wait a minute. Now we're, we're being... Uh, it's meatloaf day, evidently. Interrupted oh. here. Uh, we have uh, Christy's meatloaf has just been brought into the room. Yeah. Bob. Bob's going to try when, some of When the did meatloaf. you make this, Christy? Uh, two nights ago. Two uh, nights ago. Meatloaf is always day. best in the fridge. After, yeah. After, after a couple of exactly days. Are there any fillers days. in this? Any no, fillers? I have, what's your recipe? Can you share your uh, recipe? Yeah, I use uh, ground chuck. Some barbecue sauce, a little bit of uh, Italian breadcrumbs, a couple of Is there of barbecue eggs. sauce on this? Mm-hmm. I wasn't listening. Barbecue <laughs> sauce. <laughs> and it, then I... So uh, what's the verdict over there, Bob? I, well, it's barbecue meatloaf. I put barbecue and, uh, and? syrup on the top. To I've never, is it I've good never, barbecued meatloaf? Or? Yeah, I've never had barbecue on my meatloaf before. Not and. bad? No, it's not bad at all. Hey, I don't thank like you. It. It's not bad at all. Yeah, my kid damning with faint praise. I'm a, <laughs> I can't eat. I'm a meat intolerant. Oh. <laughs> Seriously, my kids don't eat a lot of this seconds is, uh, in my house. And this they, is very good. This is really a new it. twist to a meatloaf. Yeah, I've never so had kind of a sweet what kind of barbecue sauce? Well, well, can we get this uh, food show all over the... Like we Sweet Baby Ray? Or... Yeah, Let's, uh, can we celebrate Joe Day again, Let's please? Let's do that. Uh, no, don't feed it to me. Here. Eat it. Uh huh. <laughs> no, it's very good. Thank you. You need to dunk it in ketchup, though. That's the way I eat meatloaf. No, I don't use ketchup in my meatloaf. A hint of dog food. I <laughs> just a hint. Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Morning laughter <laughs> <laughs> just might be the best medicine. If you want to turn your daddy parts orange, eat some Cheetos and watch some porn. Bob and Tom Radio 24-7. Time now for Great Moments in NFL History. The year 1976. The place, Miami, Florida. It was Super Bowl X, and America was celebrating her bicentennial. The national anthem that year was performed by a famous blind entertainer, Tom Sullivan. Let's listen to this rare recording of his pre-game <laughs> performance. Oh, say can you see? Mr. Sullivan, what? you're not on the microphone. Take three steps forward. Oh, oh okay. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> oh. By the dawn's early <laughs> light. <laughs> oh. <laughs> While organizers were applauded for their support of people with disabilities, fans and critics alike agreed that a stage 12 feet off the ground was a particularly bad idea. A little help now. This has been Great Moments in NFL History. Oh. 
Hi, this is Mike Birbiglia, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Joining us in the studio, comedian Ed Yeager. Hi, guys. Hi, Hi Ed. Ed. How are you? Good. Good to see you again. I'm glad football season's almost here. I love football. I do, too. I was, uh, sit- I was in a hotel room. <laughs> and I just I was watching a football game and I I opened the drawer I pull out the Bible I turned I I turned to John three sixteen mm-hmm. and it actually says sitteth thee in the end zone with a large sign <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lowell, Lowell Sanders is here with us I'm on the road uh, uh, now Lowell single? are you, are you a single, single man Yeah I uh, left a wife in Detroit Oh okay uh-huh. <laughs> well, I see how it works Police should have found her by now. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. They won't, they won't find her. Ain't no way. You're, you're that good, aren't you? Yeah. Well. You know you're too high when you're eating cereal naked and your girlfriend tells you to put some clothes on, you realize it's not your girlfriend, it's just a woman on a bus. Yeah. That's how you know you're too high. Essential morning radio. All day and all night. Really? No, seriously. Really? Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. There's Tom going through papers, going through the overnights over there. I'm trying to find some uh, college basketball in full swing, uh, taking center stage as far as the sports world goes. We'll talk We'll talk about it. The uh, Bob and Tom favorite college basketball team, the Creighton Barrels, uh, they had a big win last night over number one UConn, the Cornelius's. Go, go Barrels. Mm-hmm. Okay, there's... Cornelius, what? Cornelius says Yukon Cornelius. Oh, Yukon Cornelius. Oh. oh. Creighton Barrels. That's not as good as Creighton Barrels. Uh, it's hard to beat that one. Yeah, it's hard to it's, beat. If, if you're not familiar with the store, it probably doesn't make much sense. Creighton Barrel? Creighton yeah, Barrel? I'm sure. Uh, I was just in there. It's a very nice place. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Fair enough. Very fine. Packing your stuff. I uh, got a qu- 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 quick update here uh, from uh, those who know this sort of thing. Oh, um, I was asking if uh, this guy who got out of jail, got out of prison, then immediately stole a truck and was immediately rearrested, will he go back to the same prison? Uh, maybe, but he it's apparently, according to uh, a couple of accounts, very unlikely he'll get the same cell and the same, quote, bunk mate. Ah. Very unlikely. Yeah. So I would imagine the, the, the prison business is... Uh, a going concern. They're very busy, I would think. Yeah. And they've got to put prisoners somewhere. Isn't overcrowding a problem? I mean... I think in some places, yeah. And holding a, a cell for someone. Yeah, like I said, he, while the guy was gone, uh, someone took his place. And I wonder if, he'll, as you say, is he going to get that, that corner office cell? <laughs> Much prized. Um, and then... Um, if he's a recidivist, he should get a crappier cell than he had before. Recidivism. Yes. Repeat offender. <laughs> yes. And again, I, the other question that you have, I, which is a re- I really think is a good one, Chick, uh, if you're like a major famous criminal, do they retire your number? You the know, when, number they when Dahmer you. got iced, yeah. do they take that uh, prisoner number and put a big banner up in the yard? Right. Like the, the the Ring of Honor, the Hall of Fame. Well, we don't know the answer to that either. But uh, Wasn't that a big thing about Alcatraz? Like the... Like Capone, all the big time criminals went there, and you didn't want to go there. It was, oh yeah, people were oh, yeah. terrified to go there. Couldn't escape yeah. things like that, right? Well, apparently, someone did. And then you got your. I think that's a federal pound me in the ass. Remember those? Yeah. Well, and then there's okay. the country club. Is there anything going on in sports <clears throat> right now? Uh, as we were saying, Stephen Ashworth. Scored 16 of his 20 in the first half as the Creighton Barrels build a double-digit lead. And the number 15, it says here, Blue Jays. I don't know where they're getting that information. They knock off UConn last night, the number one team in the country, 85-66 for their first win over a number one ranked team. Creighton led by 23 with 10 minutes left. They beat the ass and saw the lead cut to 10 before the Huskies scored. Scoreless on five straight possessions, rebuilt their uh, uh, Creighton rebuilt the cushion and prompted students. They stormed the floor. How do you feel about court storming, Tom? Are you for it or against it? Uh, uh, I'm not paying attention. Who's storming what? Why? I'm over here working on something. I'm sure this is really boring. What ha- what's happening? The field for the 12-team college football playoff will comprise of five conference champions and seven at-large getting selections. Back, wait a minute. Getting back to that. Aren't they talking about outlawing that? Or how are you going to prevent to. it? They want to. Right. People are getting hurt. Well, yeah. They, they, they storm it's the become court. A, yeah, it's a problem. a bad deal. How are it's they going to enforce that? I don't know. There's some great videos. Well, Tom. 
come. Of they the put, security guards, they're going like this as they're trying to keep people. And from they have uh, the court. they have the ropes, the velvet ropes. They really? put up. You ah. can't go across a velvet row. Yeah. Tasers. Uh, yeah, I don't know how they would enforce it, but anyway, uh, college football playoff. They announced that officially. Uh, I want that's going to look like the twelve team playoff for this year. I'd share the details with you, but Tom would. Yell and scream and give. No, me I was just. I was. I'm trying to catch look. up with a few things over here. The mistakes have been made. I'm trying to fix them over here. Well, go ahead. Chick can do his thing. A man in Texas. Um, well, wait a minute. Yeah. Why not? I got a stupid world record. A man in Texas broken the Guinness World Record for the fastest time to finish a half marathon while dribbling a basketball. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> Now we're talking. <laughs> this is cool. This is cool, says Tom. <laughs> Can you imagine how hard that would be? Can you imagine how much I don't care about this? Does he have to, if he misses a dribble, does he have to start over? Um, I would think so. He can't run off and chase the basketball. Is he continuously dribbling a basketball? But listen to this. How far did he go? Shut up. Listen to this. Man, it feels good to tell you to shut up. <laughs> Mr. Ben Duong, D-U-O-N-G. Uh-huh. Remember, two Dwongs don't make a, <laughs> a Dwight. Dwight. <laughs> he completed the Austin Marathon in one hour, 21 minutes, and 38 seconds. I mean, that itself is impressive. The marathon! Yeah. Not only did he rank 12th in the half marathon, he did so while dribbling a basketball the entire time. Hmm. His achievement beat the previous record of one hour, 25 minutes. That would have been noisy. I have a neighbor who plays uh, basketball a lot, and it's uh, the noise. Really? Hey, yeah, really. Hey, old man, stop dribbling so much, yeah, this kid. Is, this is uh, this is poorly <laughs> uh, this is poorly written. This the, the word half is uh, noticeably absent in this entire story. It's in the first sentence. It's a half marathon. Man breaks world record by finishing Austin Marathon, and I know what half looks like. H A L F. Not in that <laughs> sentence. Headline. While dribbling a basketball. Read the first line. A man in Texas has broken the Guinness World Record for the f fastest time to finish a marathon while dribb dribbling a basketball. Give me that piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know if I'm lying or not, do you? I know you're lying because I'm looking at the piece of paper. Well, why don't you read it and then I can go home and vomit? How's that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is super cool. This guy's really fast the whole it's time not, dribbling. It's though. And he went over 13 miles... Although if he'd been in the How NBA, if he'd been in the NBA, they wouldn't have called him for traveling. Uh, he could take oh, as many there, steps as you and, want. And the explanation as to why we did the story. <laughs> no, I like because the guy's name is Ben Dong. I think that's pretty funny. Half <laughs> asked. I'd rather be be named Ben Dover or Ben Dong. Oh, Ben Dong for sure. I than don't ben know. Dover? I like Ben Dover. I mean, <laughs> Mr. Dover, party of four, Dover, the Dover party. Why not? Right? Yeah. Bend over. That's why this guy this guy has, he's got a goals to reach because he's been spending his whole life getting kidded about being named Mr. Dong. What do you think? Yeah, that's what I yeah. think. His friends call him Ding. And if you like, <laughs> and if you like that world record, by the way, there is a reporter on a certain radio station uh, named uh, Ping Pong. Ping uh, Pong. <laughs> no, Are we to believe that? No way. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. Oh, uh, I know. see. Oh, <laughs> and I was, hey, that's what it sounds like. Uh, hey our, there, Ping Pong. Here's our oh, Asian correspondent, Ping Pong. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. <laughs> no, it isn't. That's what you hear. There's, there's, there's oh, difference. you should have heard him off here. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you do? Did you, like, travel to Austin and I didn't know about it? The, the uh, half marathon record was uh, the Austin uh, half marathon. And now this. I don't know who Ping Pong, I've heard him, actually. And I don't know who his, his co-host is. But they yeah. have a good back and forth. <laughs> they do. <laughs> yeah. So you're yeah. getting on board with the Ping Pong thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Stupid world. Yeah, yeah. Keep that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah run your Join track. In. Go ahead. <laughs> Hundreds of people named Ryan are set to descend upon Austin, Texas. <laughs> well, at least I hope. Doesn't want to hear about the college football playoff <laughs> scenario. Doesn't want to hear about the Super Bowl a couple of weeks ago because he wanted to talk about the Eiffel Tower and matchsticks. Doesn't want to, wants to hear about this sh crap. What do these Ryans hope to do? Oh, thank oh, not you. Even, See, it's not oh, even a world record. Already the no. story's worth it. It's not even. We no, got a, a Ryan's no, Hope soap not. opera joke. Just because you say something doesn't make it true. Did you guys have Ryan's Steakhouse? 
Yeah. Yes. There's a buffet. Uh, yes. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just fantastic. Really good food. <laughs> yes. Loved. See, now aren't you glad you did the story? So what's this <laughs> happening with your name? If your name is Ryan, how does it work? <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm going to yield to you on this one. <laughs> you go right ahead, Tom. Okay, well. Uh, my my vision's kind of blurry. Why don't you go ahead and complete this story? Uh, uh, this is from KXAN. <clears throat> go ahead. It's in Austin. I think it's Channel 7. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's their, what, what, if you were the booth announcer at KXAN, what would their motto be? We can. We can? We can. Yes, you can. X, you can? Okay. That's what I said. X, you can. X, you can, mister. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, at least I know I'm running the fever, okay? <laughs> yeah. The Brooklyn-based organization known as by Ryan's for Ryan's. I don't want anything to do. Unbelievable they're doing that. Is organizing the Ryan Rodeo. Well, your name isn't Ryan. Well, Are they going to ride each other? Is that what's happening in this? They're inviting oh. Ryans of all ages. Hey, look to, at Ryan. He's on top of Ryan. <laughs> to de dethrone the Guinness World Record title for the most men with the same name in the same place. Does anybody remember what that name is? We had the story Bob? several years ago. Is it Bob? It is not. Um, I know there's a Josh Fest. I've been invited to it. HGM will take a stab at can this. Can you at I least not remember that? Can you at least stop giving us hope for world records and just stick to world records? Because this isn't a world record. So these Ryans want to beat who? The Ivans. The Ivans. Ivans. Yeah, Ivans have the Ivans? world record for the How most. How many Ivans, Ivans are there in the world? Well, there were at this one convention of Ivans, there were two thousand three hundred and twenty-five. Oh, my God. We are very um, proud. Of by the way, on their website, you'll like this chick. Yeah. If your name is Brian, B-R-Y-A-N, you are not welcome because the organizer says, quote, Brian's are just B-list Ryan's. Oh, he's <laughs> waiting for a laugh. He was waiting for a laugh. No, I, no I, I'm waiting for a he groan. He lady. Uh, yeah. Um, now, can they all, do they all have to be spelled the same? Uh, presumably. I mean, does anyone spell it R-I-A-N? Yeah, there, there's a famous director who does. But, okay. uh, yeah, there are a lot of people. There's some douches I, that so pronounce I and Ian or whatever the hell it is. Well, e and I. And I, that has nothing to do with it. Uh, no, but it's the same thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who they, if they have any celeb Bryans coming. Oh, maybe. You know, Gosling? Go Gosling, Reynolds, Seacrest. Not uh, O'Neill. No, no, not O'Neill. O'Neill deceased. Yeah. Thank you, Pat. Mm, yes. Very recent. Very recent. Yeah. There and just chimed Still in. Still sore. Um, Still uh, sore. So I think it's, uh, good luck to him. Mm. Too By the way, you'll like this, Josh. I did find out this one thing. Yeah? To, because this is a Guinness World Record, they have to have someone official there right. checking IDs. And the guy that's doing that is known as... The checker and the Ryan. Whoa! <laughs> that, hurt. that is so oh, so awful. <laughs> Did Ace give you that joke? No, no, that no, no, no. The I said, fewest. I said wow. Uh, the fewest uh, of folks with the same name uh, recently. Uh, Adolf. I bet couldn't really muster up oh. a quorum. <laughs> if you if you will. <laughs> so good luck, Ryan's. If you're interested in this. Uh, once again, head for uh, Austin. Austin, Texas. When? Um, I, I'm not exactly. It's this say. weekend, it says. <laughs> at a place called Buck Wild. Okay. It's a festival they have. Okay. Uh, they share a lot of festivals down there, don't they? It's a fun place to live. Yeah, be. cool. Yeah. I've been there. I've the best Mexican, <laughs> best, best Mexican street corner I've ever had in my life. I heard it was pretty awesome oh, 10 years ago. Uh, great. <laughs> what I heard. <laughs> yeah. Off the back of a truck. And the Australian show jumper we were forced why to talk about hands? earlier in the week. <laughs> yeah, why'd they put it on a bumper? Why'd they put it in the tortilla instead of off a truck? Off a truck? It was a food truck. <laughs> oh. So yeah, you have to put your hands behind your back and eat it <laughs> off, off the a ground. bumper. Yeah. Well, welcome to the food truck. Put your hands behind your back. <laughs> The Australian show jumper, uh, Mr. Shane Rose, has been returned return to competition after an incident involving the wear, wearing of a so-called mankini during competition. Oh, so they relented and said, yeah, hey, this was this a guy is a, This guy's one of their best Equestrian riders. Equestrian Australia reviewed the an incident and concluded the 50-year-old team member had not breached the code of conduct by wearing a mankini. Um, he did it as a joke at a competition and... They were not going to let him be in the Olympics, so they've, they've changed their mind. I just want to update you because we had the story yesterday, kind of an important thing in the world of, in, in, the, in the equestrian world. Guy 
of a mankini. I forgot that I do watch that horse stuff when the Olympics come around. You like the horse the stuff? Horse I do, stuff? yeah. You guys know me. I love horse. I love horse things. Are you turned on by uh, the no. horse body? Well, you should go uh, to polo with me just this year. enjoying it. I'd love to, yeah. yeah you you got a big stupid you. hat? That's no, all you need. I, I think, Josh, you are the only, <laughs> one of you pointed out that you, you got to give the guy credit because riding a horse... The chafing while wearing a mankini. You may have actually pointed out, but I think you're totally right. It, it, well, it, that and the bouncing up and down. It couldn't have been there's comfortable. There's no protection. Isn't the mankini, though, just for a joke scenario? I can't. Yeah. Yes. No, I don't joke. think there's anyone's no, wearing no, that. It's not, it. It, it's not uh, he, functional at all. And he put it on at a, a very stuffy equestrian event as a joke. You're yeah. making this guy some kind of hero. No, he's, I was having some fun. He's probably so, a great guy. He's kind of thumbing his nose at authority, which I always appreciate, but he, he, he acted all surprised when they got upset about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, good luck to him. We'll ho hope to see you in the Olympics in Paris. Should be should should be fun. You know, rides. Allie Breen rides. Yeah, she's a very good rider. We'll talk to her today, won't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be sexy time. And also, what about those uh, uh, Paris Olympic medals, Tom? What about uh, those? Well, they, they include a piece of the Eiffel Tower. I think it's amazing. It's mm -hmm. great. <laughs> and I don't know if is the Eiffel Tower open today? No, no, it's uh, closed on Wednesdays. I don't think so. You it's closed to... on Wednesdays. Yeah. Everybody knows that. No, no, no. No, there, there was, was a... big strikes there yesterday. <laughs> there a... They're doing no, no, protests. No. <laughs> there was a protest yesterday. He's trying to be serious. Why were they protesting the Eiffel Tower? They're... Too, this too, thing's too tall. Too tall, yeah. No, it's... Lower the tower. To the Lower, the tower. <laughs> Lower the tower. Lower the tower. Lower the tower. Cut it in half. Cut <laughs> it in half. <laughs> Isn't there a... Due to a strike action as part of the Eiffel Tower personnel, it's currently closed. The people that work there, I think, are on strike. Oh. Oh, like the, uh, well, that makes sense. Okay. Elevator operator, I'm guessing. I don't know the maintenance crew. If they're striking over at the Louvre, they well, maybe the uh, Eiffel Tower people would strike in uh, solidarity. Maybe they could. You they got to get it together by the time when they have the Olympics. I'm looking forward to the Olympics. And are you going to go? Um, Please go. Yes, go for like a month. Be month our and correspondent. Be fun. No, I think I'm, I may be going to England for a week. Yeah. So, actually, I've got to figure out. Um, but the, England's not where the Olympics are. Yeah, you're going to stand you're, on the other side of the channel. Uh, now, uh, now, you you can get to Paris easier if yeah, you swim from across. Yeah, that's true. Is you it can the shuttle it. or yeah. the channel? Yeah, uh, whatever it is. I think I'm going to be going to uh, oh, here we go. Michigan and then to England. Or maybe the other way around. Well, you gotta oh. stop uh, now, we have... Uh, oh. <laughs> Uh, Gotta stop there. Yeah. Isn't there a, a, a move in the bedroom known as the Eiffel Tower, Josh? There is. Yeah, it requires three people. Mm -hmm. Two men, one woman. Really? Yeah. Well, you got the yeah. woman and you got guy at either end. And then, and they, then they, they, they double high five. High five and oh, my uh, goodness. Classy. 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 You got your yeah. Eiffel Tower. I'd be shocked if it's ever been done. Yeah, are, most oh. of those, are most of those moves like the Cleveland Steamer is all that just made up? I, I yeah, hope so. Some of those I read, the I only, really hope they're made yeah, up. The only one that's made up is the chili dog. I think that's... <laughs> okay. That's the, the Blumpkin. I the hope. jelly donut, I pray, okay. is made up. Well, let's yeah. uh, let's just move forward here. Coming up in sports, want to give me the teaser? Uh... I I I don't think if I I don't know if I'll be back. Okay, we have a uh, we have an update on the uh, the ship that's stinking up the harbor full of cattle. Yeah. We have um, a news oh. from the Rock and Roll Hall, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, and a little bit of Jack Black. Vote uh, for making... Peter Frampton. And I have big Beatle news for you Beatle fans. Oh out yeah, there. I saw this. Oh, yeah. cool. it it sounds like an interesting idea. Good. Yes. Now uh, uh, I want to tell you that right now this portion of the Bob and Tom Show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Now, uh, having a good 2024, I hope, uh, so far. Let's keep it going and uh, keeping uh, your your mental health, your well-being in a good spot. And a lot of people are um, concerned about their relationships, and they get this uh, misconception that relationships are easy. Uh, if, if they're easy, they're right. That's not necessarily the case. And therapy could be a place to work through some of those challenges you face in your relationships, all of them, in all aspects of your life. That's where better help comes in. What they're doing is they're actually taking advantage of uh, the uh, the world of contemporary technology. We're all carrying around those phones that are really computers, and they can uh, put us in touch with anyone anywhere in the world. And now you can get in touch with a qualified, licensed therapist. The way it works is you fill out a brief questionnaire. You'll get matched with a licensed therapist, one of 25,000 uh, working with BetterHelp. And by the way, you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. And the idea here, of course, is uh, doing the therapy in a way that's much more convenient and flexible and suited to your schedule. 
you're not going to have to check out of work and drive somewhere and sit in the lobby, et cetera, et cetera. So you, you just uh, take your phone or your laptop or your computer or whatever and get in touch with the therapist. And uh, well, I guess really to find out about it, you need to just check it out by going to betterhelp.com slash BT show. Maybe you can uh, you know, become that soulmate, your own soulmate or whatever you're looking for in that realm. Betterhelp.com slash BT show. 10% off your first month if you use that uh, slash BT show portion of the address I just gave you. Betterhelp.com slash BT show. That's betterhelp, H E L P, dot com slash BT show. Making therapy significantly more convenient for you. Once again, this part of the Bob and Tom Show, sponsored by BetterHelp. Coming up, we have, as you said, Beatles news, Eagles news, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame news. Yep. And if you have any Zimbabwean currency uh, on your person, hang on to it. Okay. I'll tell you why. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. The show is also out there for you. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. story out of Japan you about, started it. about a product that uh, they sell um, these are they're called panty scrunchies right here's the story um, it's in Japanese apparently it's pantsu sushu or shushu s-h-u-s-h-u and which translates according to this news account as panty scrunchies they're tiny panties that when tied they turn into scrunchies and according and, to this, they're just over six dollars American. And I looked at those online, mm -hmm. and I and I think I said even back a couple of weeks ago, I go, well, that's just like every other pair of thongs in my drawer. You could just make any pair of so if you were in a, in a pinch, a, a scrunchie in a pinch, if you needed to have a, a ponytail holder, I could grab a pair of. And as I point out, you'd be like a slutty magician all of a sudden. <laughs> You know, just a second, honey, I'm going to get a ponytail. You reach, you reach between your legs. <laughs> Woof. Ta-da. You're the slutty magician. And uh, you, these panties are very their... large, though. Yeah, these are bigger no, These are not your panties. Can these I see them? These are mine, actually. These are yours? Yes. Are they? they have look you sexy. worn those? They look good. I have never worn those. Well, you could, these would fall off. Yeah, they're... Um, they're one size fits all. Well, Thongs come that. one size fits all. They a lot. do. Yeah, they do. Unfortunately. Where do the legs go? These are confusing. That's... Me. Oh, I see. Oh, I got it. I got it. <laughs> Whoopsie. I yep. got it. There we Never go. Never seen a pair. Mm, What's going not on? Like this. Not at this angle. Oh, I like those. They're very nice, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. yeah they're, you... they're quite comfortable, actually. <laughs> Josh, these might fit you. These oh. these are quite roomy. <laughs> oh, hey, uh... <laughs> Set yourself up for that one, pal, didn't you? I'll, uh... <laughs> you want to try them on after I'm done putting them in sure, my hair? I'm, I'm game. You can have them if you like. No, you could make these into a jaunty beret. eBay, here I go. Handing out panties to guests? <laughs> All guests in the Bob and Tom show received monogram Bob and Tom panties. You can I do have that. Bob and Tom. I do have a well, Bob and Tom thong. So to give you an idea, these are, oh, this you is are actually falling oh off God. my head. Oh, yeah. Well, really you didn't something. scrunch it. Yeah, yeah, you you're not before. making it a scrunchie. You're making it a beret. Look, That's this, totally different. I mean, there's room for. <laughs> Seriously. There's room for a large woman. <laughs> a four yoker <laughs> in the head. Well, okay, make these into a scrunchie. They're one size fits all. I can't help that. His head did kind of look like an ass cheek while it was sticking out. Christy Lee now oh has her panties gosh. back. They're red, kind of frilly. Yeah, they're lace. They're reinforced they're in the appropriate areas yeah, where so there might be, you know. All you do Okay, is... now Christy's making a ponytail. Christy has lovely hair. Now she's 
You're going to have to like double that thing over like eight times. That right. Such That's big my panties. point. That's why the bigger ones, I mean, the smaller Japanese panties would work better. Okay. But you could still make this work. Okay. I mean, That's I don't right. even think you would know that those were panties. Would you know? No, 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 no Except for the smell. Well. Have, except for the, the smell you'd have. No. Oh, well. wait a minute. Yeah, you would never know. I said they were clean, yeah. for God's oh, sake. Sorry. They've never been worn. But yeah, then it. It yeah. just looks like a lace, like sure. a lace scrunchie. You mm-hmm. wouldn't. It does never... look nice. Yeah. So this so... is a little trick now. If you're doing the walk of shame, ladies, you can uh, well, if tie you're your pre- hair back. Or if you're anticipating the walk of shame. See, oh, so is... you have an extra pair of panties yeah. with you. Yeah. See, this is uh, thinking ahead. So you right. pull your. Or if you back. have explosive diarrhea. That's true as well. <laughs> there we go. So I think you're going to need a backup pair. <laughs> you usually take your panties off. You know, usually before women you have... just carry them in their purse, okay. but I, you know, I guess you could do that. It's kind of cool. Cool. Yeah. Good. To, good to know. Mm-hmm. So anybody could do it. Um, and uh, so she's right, Christy. Right, any any panties will work. Well, almost. I don't know if granny panties would work. Oh, but true. The yeah, smaller, yeah. the little thong ones do. Well, good to know. Mm-hmm. That's a little. You should send that tip to Cosmo. <laughs> <laughs> Send him the video. We have a little mm-hmm. made a little video here of Christy putting on her panties on her head. I'm sure that was very exciting. <laughs> uh, so you need to use them as the hair tie before you use them as panties. I had it backwards. Yes, Tom. You don't use so, dirty panties as I a see. hair Did anybody else just see Christy shake her hair out yeah, like that? It was pretty that awesome. Slow it was pretty <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wednesdays, if she's not too busy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Kostaki Economopoulos, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Joining us in the studio, comedian Larry Reeb. Now, well, Larry, you are from Chicago. Mm-hmm. You, you just got a great Chicago yeah. accent. Well, it's some, originally I'm from a little town, Dwight, Illinois. It's a farm town. Uh huh. There's a mental institution and a women's prison there. Really? <laughs> and my parents met. Ta-da. Here I am. <laughs> but yeah, I live in Chicago. Are you married? Are you I've been married ten years. Oh, how's really? it going? Good. I think us guys need good women, don't you? Women oh, yeah. keep us in line. Sure. Oh, yeah. That's why most axe murderers are single. <laughs> <laughs> if they were married, their wife wouldn't put up with that. Put that axe down. You're not chopping anybody. You have to take the garbage out. <laughs> take the ski mask off. It's summer, you idiot. TV Rogers is our guest. TV. Uh, having just met you, I can um, guess you're obviously an, an athlete. Yeah. I work out a little bit. They have the whole thing where you pump weights and all that stuff. Yeah. You gotta have a cardiovascular, man. Mm-hmm. But I was playing basketball the other day. They made me guard the worst dude on the other team. <laughs> it was a fat dude wearing thongs. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Standing on the court smoking a cigarette. You know I was a bad chick. <laughs> and you couldn't keep up with I couldn't keep up with it. <laughs> <laughs> Got involved with that aerobics. Don't like aerobics. Man, that's too much like sex. Aerobics? Yeah, you sweat, muscles hurt, and then you got a woman up there telling you you're not doing <laughs> You're listening to Bob and Tom Radio 24-7. Saturday night. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. If you're looking for uh, some sort of story about the realignment of the college football playoff <laughs> season, it was announced yesterday that most sports casts are paying attention to this morning. Or if you're looking at Creighton's upset of UConn last night and some information you covered about that, that, you uh, you don't uh, don't uh, worry about here. Uh, don't 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 listen to us because we uh, we can't talk about it because we're talking about a man and a. Man Keeney riding a horse, and hopefully <laughs> he's going to be included in Australia's equestrian team in the Paris go. Olympics. That's exciting. Not not some football thing 11 months down the road. Yeah, yeah. That'll be right. in the paper. Right, right. You can read about that any time in the next 11 months. <laughs> the paper. Yeah. Uh, that's that's not on saying. the international news The newspaper no. will paper. be delivered I'm to sorry. your door today. I'm sorry. Uh, is that sports? No. Oh. America's commercial casinos won... $66.5 billion from gamblers in 2023. <laughs> oh, uh, it's the industry's best year ever. We're this was from right. Atlantic City, according to figures. And I'm not taking any questions. Do okay. you hear me? All right, I'm ready. Except for the play. I didn't say F. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it was released by the National Trade Association on Tuesday. These figures, the American Gaming Association, the AGA, said the total was 10% higher than in 2022, which that was also a record setting year. Revenue figures from tribal owned casinos are released separately later this year. So this is going to go higher. Yeah. $66.5 billion. Billions. Who's surprised? Nobody. 
I don't guess. That's a lot of money. I can't imagine. Maybe. No wonder that Wynn guy has a nice hotel. I think everybody <laughs> and their brother took the Chiefs this year for the, and the points for the Super Bowl. I don't know how that. I don't. You can't tell me they made any money on that bet. But other than that, yeah, there's there, a lot of other bets yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, a lot of other stuff going on. So there you go. And that's sports. Oh, that's sports. Okay, yes, thank sir. you very much. I... Yes, sir. Hey, Rocky, this is what you farted for. There we go. Whatever you do, always be a good sport. Chris Day. A story that has really ticked Tom off this morning. In uh -oh. Colorado, a man is dead after being bitten by his pet Gila monster. Good. Oh, Lakewood man. police say a 34-year-old by the name of Christopher Ward died in the hospital Friday, four days after the bite by the venomous lizard. If confirmed, the death would be a rare case of someone dying from a Gila monster, which, of course, live in the southwestern United States. Gila monster bites can cause intense pain but aren't normally deadly. Uh, must have been filled with bacteria. Yeah, must have been. Apparently, his girlfriend walked in because she heard something wasn't right and found the Gila monster clamped down on his hand, mm. and he started vomiting and then passed out, and that's when he oh, was rushed man. to the hospital. He had two, by the way, two Gila monsters. That's a shame. I'm doubling your chances. <laughs> <laughs> so we are staying. staying but, had, but, but excuse me, I'm sorry. But he had a girlfriend. He did have a girlfriend. That's and amazing. The two Gila monsters were taken to a sanctuary in South Dakota. Oh, so we're going with Gila monster now instead of Gila monster. Right? I don't know what it I is. I believe Gila I believe it is pronounced with as I believe that G is pronounced like an H. I is think. that right? I've I don't know. I've always heard that. I've always heard mm. that, but that is. Like giant is has a J sound. Could it be a Gila monster? Gila monster, Gila monster, Gila monster. I th always thought it was Hyant. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Josh, help me with this, Josh. I'll believe See, this you. is why English Probably. is such a confusing language. Yes. You're trying to learn it. All of a sudden you go, look, it's gigantic. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, I'm sorry, it makes sense. The guy, guy, It's very hard language to get. But. Sure. Uh, but again, this is really rare for a guy that has a Gila monster to have a girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tom, you'll like this. The Komodo dragon is the largest living lizard species, a monitored lizard. It occurs on Komodo Island, and it's the most poisonous lizard out there. I Isn't guess. that the one that bit um, Sharon, Sharon Stone's, Stone's husband, husband yeah. at the time? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was when a close went, call, wasn't it? Yeah, they were in the they were at the zoo and they were doing like a behind the scenes tour or something, and he got too close. They can the run fast Komodo enough. Dragon bit him. Komodo dragons can run fast enough to attack and kill human beings. Yikes. Wow. Uh, the Gila monster is the seventh ranked uh, ven venomous uh, lizard. I think it might have gone up in the ratings after this guy. <laughs> maybe yeah. You might want to yeah. yeah. see if... Uh, did, you did. Get, did you get to vote in this poll? <laughs> Snapping turtles are on this list of venomous You don't. You uh, don't get lizards. to vote. I don't get to vote in this either. <laughs> yeah, really? You Number don't? one. I would think that you'd be getting... College athletics. Uh, no. The, the ven venomous lizards. I don't the, get to vote. The Gila Ridiculous. monster gets an upset and you don't get to I vote. Don't, I don't get anything. Do you think they'd have a clue that was kind of dangerous, don't you? being named a monster yeah okay yeah um where are those native to by the way southwestern united states and mexico god ugh. <laughs> how big are they I they get pretty big they're yeah. little like small dogs you guys what? know there's something yeah, yeah of yeah. course yeah they're cool you know I, there's something called a tree crocodile a tree crocodile <laughs> what the hell's that they're found on the island of new guinea most prefer the island's lowland environs near the coast. Some have been observed living in mountainous environments up to 600, about 2,100 feet. They're black, white specks of green and yellow, and are crazy poisonous. Ugh. What? What, where are they on the list? Uh, they're at number three. This is poisonous lizards? What's number two? Komodo dragon versus uh, one of these is, uh, by weight, these can be larger. Oh, okay. Uh, number two is the common or Malayan water monitor. Uh, oh. They keep track of the water. <laughs> you got your pass? <laughs> yeah. What are you doing in the water? And oh. if you're not supposed to be there, they kill you. Now, in the movie The Freshman, what is the critter that they that's end up... That's the only reason eating? I ta started talking about it, The Komodo dragon, yeah. yes. Okay. Have you ever seen The Freshman, Christy? I have, but it's been a while. Matthew Broderick. Great movie. And uh, Marlon Brando. Marlon, Marlon Brando's got yeah. a small part. I remember the ending. That it's a special dining club. And and Burt Parks <laughs> plays yes. Burt Park. Oh, it's just be a great movie. Uh, highly underrated. <laughs> have, you, have you ever seen it, Josh? Yeah. It's it's it's, it's yeah, really it's cool. Entertaining. There's, there's a giant dragon at the end. <laughs> yes. Moto dragon. I do remember that. They, and they're they're going to eat it. Uh, now, uh, what's coming up in the news, Christy Lee? Uh, well, we have news out of the Isle of Wight. We have a lot of rock and roll news this morning. Beatles, Foreigner, Eagles, 
Uh, so if you're a fan of, of classic rock, you want to stick around. Oh, and a cool thing about the eclipse. Yeah, this is a cool story. A lot of places to see the eclipse, but this one's pretty unique. And the whole eclipse thing, very dependent on the weather. Yes. In fact, they're, they're thinking of postponing it because the weather when it's yeah. supposed to be. <laughs> uh, you mean like the Daytona 500? Uh, yeah. They're yeah. going to move it to a Monday? They have to yeah. push it back. <laughs> Clear skies are very important. Okay. All right. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Got something to say? Send us an email. Bob and Tom at BobandTom.com. This is the Bob and Tiki Barber here. Remember the days when I was a running back in the NFL? Well, if you're on your feet all day like I was, you get the struggle. The secret is orange insoles. Their insoles are like magic for your feet and body. They'll help you kick hip pain, sore feet, and lower back discomfort to the sidelines. Feel better, do more with orange insoles. <laughs> uh, this, this may come as no surprise. This is a, a song about farming. Oh. Farming, okay. Oh, okay. One, two, one, two, three. Western U.S. and neighboring areas of Mexico. Their bites usually cause intense pain and make their victims pass out, but normally are not deadly. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show on the way. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. I moved to New York a couple years ago, and it's uh, very expensive. I had to get roommates when I first moved there. One of my roommates was a prostitute. This is true. She's a prostitute and a temp. Like, that's how expensive New York City is. <laughs> Turning tricks isn't enough money. You have to know Word and Excel. <laughs> wow. Yes. You better bring your A game. Uh, yeah, I guess. Big apple. Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. You don't say we didn't warn you. <laughs> There's laughter ahead. We yeah. can't go anymore. <laughs> Holy That's cow. a good day's work, everybody. This is Bob and Tom Radio. Radio. Brigham All Broadcasting presents another Bob and Tom Olympic moment in history. The year was 1912. The place, 
Hocker on Rhine, Germany. <laughs> After several complaints about unsanitary conditions from competitors in a sledding event, it was determined that some of the participants were unaware of the precise nature of a particular event. Once the officials removed all the phlegm balls from the course and explained that the name of the event was pronounced luge and not loogie, <laughs> the competition continued without any further problems. Uh, ironically, the eventual winner of the luge event was an Austrian named Karl Boogermeister. <laughs> he took the gold medal by a narrow margin mm. over Norwegian athlete <laughs> who was disqualified. <laughs> this has been another Bob and Tom Olympic moment in history. Hey, this is Larry the Cable Guy, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. If you're not, you're a communist. Hunting is, is huge in Michigan. I'm, I don't want to upset any hunters because generally they're very well armed. But mm -hmm. I am uh, not a hunter. I'm not, I don't get the deer hunting thing. I don't understand it, mainly for this reason. I think it's unfair. The deer hunting season coincides with the deer mating season. Uh -huh. Everyone know that? The deer just trying to hook up. Yeah. You know, that's not fair. Mm -hmm. I mean, picture yourself. You're at a bar. It's late at night. Last call. You're sitting there. Somebody sneaks up behind you dressed as a chair. Right. And shoots you in the head. Oh. That's not fair. That's not fair at all. So, Mark, you're a single guy. Yeah, I tell you, though, it's tough because uh, I got these neighbors behind uh -huh. me. Really? My neighbor, Gail, very... Um, Gail. Uh, Gail is a woman who just moved. Her bedroom wall is right behind mine, and um, she has a new boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And I found this out. Uh, his name is Tom! <laughs> <laughs> My most recent marriage was a disaster. It made the wreck of the Edmunds Fitzgerald look like a fender bender. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sorry to hear that. Uh, hello. And you remember Lord's famous line about uh, gun control. More ah, or yes. yes. It, it, the relationship taught me a lot. It mm. taught me they won't sell you a handgun if you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. <laughs> you're so weird. You have no idea. Essential Morning Radio. <laughs> this is Bob and Tom Radio. On the way. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin. Hello. He's over there in the performance room. How about a song from Pat? Yeah, uh, Pat. Sure. Today, Tom, how about that? Can we, sure. Can we um, think about that? We've got a couple topics that might be good for you, Pat. There's Josh Arnold. Hello. Ace Cosby's here. Hey. I'm, I'm Chick. And back to Tom. Got some Beatles news. Yeah, we do. Uh, oh. Maybe you could do one of your Beatles tributes. Uh, yesterday, we had the story about uh, Paul McCartney's famous... Hoffner va bass, the the violin. No, no, no! Bass. It was the Hoffner bass. Did I, uh, ho no. the Hoffner bass? <laughs> Sorry, I've got a, a chapped lip here. Um, the, the Hoffner bass. Yeah, kiss yeah, that for way. him and make it better. James. And uh, <laughs> uh, uh, it's been returned after being stolen. What was it, sixty years ago? Yeah. Yeah. But we have more Beatles news today. Yeah, Pat, have you heard this? The Beatles have, are getting yeah. the big screen biopic treatment. Bless you. Sorry. In a fab four of movies that will give each band member their own film, all directed by Sam Menendez. And for the first time, the Beatles are giving full life and music rights to the project. And I believe it's just Sam Mendes. Is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. M-E-N-D-E-S, mm -hmm. -E yeah. yeah. Mendes? Or Mendez, yeah. Mendes. He did so, American Beauty. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I thought so, that's what um, I said. Man, that's a good movie. I got, I, got, yeah. I got one phrase for you here. Kiss solo albums. The stories of Paul McCartney, John well, Lennon, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr will all be you're gonna making upset. up the quartet of films, and they will be re released in the theaters See, what 2027. I know what my you're, you're upsetting Ace. My point is, Ace, when Kiss released the solo albums, didn't one of them have significantly more sales than the other three? So who do you think is going to have more sales? John? Oh, the John Lennon will. John yeah. or Paul? I think Paul. I'm just I saying. Think Paul too. I'm just saying. I'll go to the Ringo one just to be nice. Wow. <laughs> I think Ringo's a great guy by all accounts. I think Ringo would get more than George Harrison. I'll go to the George one, watch the stabbing, and walk out. <laughs> it's the only thing. Really? I like oh yeah, when they uh, attacks the house. Yeah, <laughs> crazy That's fun, right? <sighs> Here comes the. I mean, what else? What else are these movies going to be about? I don't Ooh. know. 
I mean, is, it, is this all because that totally inaccurate Queen movie was so successful? Is that why Probably. they're doing this? Well, you read about that movie. Well, Ray Charles' and it was movie, too, was successful. fairly uh, entertaining, but... It, you read about that movie, like none of that was the case. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the, the, the whole thing, the whole thing at the end was faked. That would yeah, that never happened. So weird. Made for a good movie though. People loved it. Mm. The Elton John one didn't do nearly as well. That was because no, it was one. miserable. <laughs> it was, like, there wasn't <laughs> one moment of joy in that. Was a bad movie. You're telling me Elton John didn't have a good time at all, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think uh, most people are ready for the good time Elton had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Better than him sitting in a therapy group whining or whatever yeah. that movie was. Oh, that so they're going to do uh, four... Di four oh. different Beatle movies. That seems to... I don't know. And Ooh. then they're all probably... They don't know if they're going to coexist at the theater at the same time or if they're going to be released separately near each other or... Too much. Do you remember when the movie Clue came out and you could go and yep. pick whichever ending you wanted to see? You didn't, you could see... Did that, do, there, did that do well? No. There, are there, were there four or five endings? I forget there how many three. there were. Three. Yeah. So you would see Clue A, Clue yeah. B, or Clue C. Ooh. Or in my case, none of the above. <laughs> oh, I love it. Clue's great. I like Clue too. <laughs> it was one of my favorite games as a kid growing up. No, but I mean, is the movie any good? Yes, it's yeah, real fun. Yeah, real, it's fun. real fun, but the, but it just did not work at the box office. That didn't uh, are, fly. Is, are, are they doing this because of the Bob Marley movie doing so well? I don't... Uh, I'm sure this was in the works way okay. before the Bob Marley They've movie. They've all done well. I think they all do pretty well. Yeah. Oh, the Bob Marley movie? Let's play that same song again? Yeah, I, I like that movie. I can't wait to see this. You yeah. just played that one. Yeah, yeah, that's a great <laughs> movie. Guys. One love. One. Do you okay, have a uh, Beatles song for us, Pat? Uh, I have a Beatles song for every Beatle. Oh, really? Sure. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll, I could pick my favorite, and we could start from there. Okay. All right. How about Paul McCartney? Here's my favorite Paul McCartney tribute. Because this is kind of personal. Now that I'm older, life isn't fair with a midlife bankruptcy. I'm late on every payment with the balance due. Can't pay my doctor, he's gonna sue. Gigs have dried up, I can't get a loan. I've never been so poor. Will you still love me? Put no one above me. My credit score was 364. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> Thank you. That's me favorite. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, Whatever it, happened to the Beatles uh, cartoon uh, series? Well, that was great. That was, that was the yeah. thing on. That was the thing on ABC. <laughs> right? Right? Well, it was huge. Little, it was I was like, like seven. seven. Yeah, it was great then. <laughs> Somebody did an impression of all of them. <laughs> no but, kidding. Yeah, it wasn't them. No, well, anyway, it was not them. No. Were they drawn the same as they are in Yellow Submarine? And kind of, sort kind of. I, yeah, I want to say yes. Bit, yeah. yeah, that's funny. I don't remember I loved that. It. Of course, I was. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's research. That may be. Thank you, Josh. A little obscure. <laughs> it's probably out there on the internet somewhere. Uh, Patty G, by the way, is going to be at Lebowski's Rock and Bowl, Washington, Iowa, coming up Friday, March twenty third. No kidding. Mm -hmm. There you go. Oh, no, are we getting any of the more Beatles? Just the yeah. One? No, you can, every hour we'll give you a new. Oh one. no. Oh, okay, I see. great. Okay. Oh, okay. Oscar nominated producer songwriter Mark Ronson has put together a video, not campaigning for his own Academy Award nomination for the music of Barbie, but. For the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame bid for Foreigner, the founding lineup of which happens to have his stepfather, Mick Jones, as a cornerstone. Hmm. The video posted on Ronson's Instagram account features Dave Grohl, Jack Black, Slash, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Chad Smith, along with Ronson himself, asserting Foreigner sustainability for Rock Hall induction. Suitability, rather. Not I've got a, uh, a little bit of the audio from this. This is, uh, this is Jack Black. Feels like the first time when oh no no like you opened up the door. Hey Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, open the door. Foreigners waiting outside. Let him in. Oh, Jack. Very cool. And by the way, we do certainly urge you to vote for our buddy Peter Frampton. Yes, you can vote for up to seven on a daily basis at the Rock, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame website. So we do encourage you to do that. Ronson posted, yes, Mick is my stepdad and I love him more than anything, acknowledging his vested interest. But he quotes, he says, I'm also a mega fan, just like Dave Jack slash Chad Josh. Enjoy the video and vote, baby, vote. Foreigner, one of 15 nominees announced last week. It also includes our good friend Peter Frampton. Vote, vote, vote. Mariah Carey, Cher, Ozzy Osbourne, Sinead O'Connor, Oasis, Sade, Cool and the Gang, and A Tribe mm -hmm. Called Quest. So there are a lot of great people on the list.
All right. So um, how do you vote again, Christy? You go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame website, Rock Rock and Roll Hall dot com, I believe. But I can. Okay. It. Well, that'll Slash be cool. Um, we have um, uh, some more news in the rock and roll realm coming up involving the Eagles. Yes. Uh, but what have you got over there right now? Taco Bell bringing back the Choco Taco. Yes! <laughs> this is big news. I told Rejoicing! You. Tom was right. I knew, you'd be, I knew you'd be happy. Ice cream company Salt and Straw is teaming up with Taco Bell to bring back the Choco Taco. Klondike discontinued the cult favorite dessert treat back in 2022, leaving fans like Josh very sad. It's th- th- all the ingredients of a drumstick in a taco shape, and it's, it's fantastic. Delicious, yeah. It's great idea. During its... <laughs> Never had one. Oh, you'll oh, love it. Man. All right. Live Moss Live event. Taco Bell announced the collaboration with the Portland-based ice cream maker to resurrect the Choco Taco. Salt and Straw shared images of the creation onto social media and said, quote, the hand-pressed waffle cone shells and fresh-made cinnamon, is it Ancho, A-N-C-H-O? I don't know. Ice cream and dipped in single uh, origin chocolate studded with toasted brown rice will be available this summer. Fantastic. It'll be served with three custom sauce packets and a tangy cheesecake dip on the side. What? That's sauce, new. Yeah. Sauce packets? Yeah. Because I usually get the Choco Taco Supreme with sour cream and tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> mm. could, right. they do, could they do Choco Nachos? Oh, man. <sighs> well, you crazy. know what? You can nice do anything. tray of them. A mess. We could create these for the show. Ice cream chocolate tacos this summer. Yeah. Good taco. idea. All right. Good and they still have Mexican pizza, right? They do. That, that, you brought it back. You are the one. You single-handedly, <laughs> I think, brought that back. Yeah. Congratulations, my friend. <laughs> well, speaking of great food, I want to give you the word about HelloFresh. What is HelloFresh all about? It's about um, escaping the winter blahs in your diet, getting a little tired of the same restaurants, getting tired of your own food. HelloFresh can uh, give you a real kick in the butt by giving you great food and making it really easy for you to uh, eat like you're a uh, king. Or a queen. What I'm talking about is HelloFresh. The way it works is they do the grocery shopping. Uh, they deliver the box to you, and you put it together. They give you the instructions. And they've done all the measuring. So uh, the thing is, you go on, look at the menu, more than 40 recipes to choose from on any given week, and uh, you pick the ones you want, and they come in the box, and voila, it's time to put them together. Sometimes just a few minutes, pop them in the oven, and you're ready to rock with HelloFresh. Uh, Christy Lee, what have you been working on over there? The Tuscan Pork Linguini. The total time for this dish, 30 minutes. Juicy pork sausage, tomatoes, and the perfect base for a beautiful pasta sauce with some chili flakes for a kick. It's a one-ingredient meal or one bowl meal and it looks delicious the tuscan pork linguine mm. and of course uh, every kind of food is available from the uh from the classic to the exotic and uh, they've got if you're a vegetarian they've got you covered if you're doing low cal they've got you covered low carb they've got you covered good old-fashioned comfort food it's there and also free breakfast for life while you keep that subscription active details at hellofresh.com slash Excuse me, <clears throat> HelloFresh.com slash BT Show Free. That's HelloFresh.com slash BT Show Free. One free breakfast item per box with an active subscription. HelloFresh.com slash BT Show Free. Coming up, we have a interesting story about um, the Eagles and uh, someone trying to uh, make a bunch of money off the Eagles. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, and also, the brightest spot in the universe has been discovered. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, this is Augie Smith, and you're listening. Well, I was thinking some music you want to hear. Uh, I was thinking since it's summertime, yes, uh, and uh, everyone's yeah. watching baseball, playing baseball. You have a you, do, do you know your softball tribute? Yeah, I can uh, try to get through it better than I did the other one. Church league softball. Let's pull the key up. <clears throat> Great idea. Yeah. There, <laughs> there we go. go. Church league softball fist fight. Getting washed in the blood on a Tuesday night. What would Jesus do? Lord, he wouldn't do that. Knock hell out of a preacher with the softball bat. Well, the swinging shepherds from the sheep of the Savior were tied with the sourwood church of Christ. An example of some highly unholy behavior in a game that had already been protested twice. Something unbiblical must have been said for them to be aiming heat at a minister's head. <laughs> Talking the clergy ain't the thing to do, but neither's the high hard one on a 0 and 2. <laughs> church league, softball, fist fight, a bloody laying on a hands neat the left. 
lights, knocking out four teeth, getting a busted lip, ain't exactly my idea of Christian fellowship. Church league softball fist fight, rolling around the pitcher's mound, it just don't look right for nice people from the church and the Sunday school class to trade the cup of brotherhood for a can of whoop ass. Thank you. Tim Wilson. Yeah. Any changes you'd like to make in the world right I gotta now? tell you, okay, first of all, uh, as, as you guys know, uh, I, I, drive, I drive a Cadillac. Uh -huh. I drive a, and if you don't know, Cadillac is kind of considered the Mercedes of cars. <laughs> and, <laughs> so I've heard. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a real big car, and it goes real fast, and mm -hmm. I can't always follow all the rules of the road. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm barreling down the street, and I guess the light was red. Who can tell at that speed? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I got the photo ticket. Oh, sure. yeah. If you've never gotten the, what it is, is you're going through the intersection, then there's a flash of light, and you think, ah, I hit 88. I'm going back in time, right? You know, yeah. finally a chance to go try to break up my parents before they can uh, get together at the child abandonment under the sea dance. That seems but, negative. Oh, boy. It's not, but it's not that at all. Mike, not, they're not. The police aren't even going to work anymore. They're just setting up a yeah. camera and calling it good. Uh -huh. They're caparazzi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame them. Uh, I don't blame all the laws that, that they're supposed to. Have, they, you, get a, you get in your car, you got to wear a seatbelt. Why do you wear a seatbelt? Because it's the right thing to do? No, because the man tells you have to, right? right? Mm -hmm. Click it or tick it, mm -hmm. jackass, uh -huh. right? Because your government is very, very concerned about your health and safety, and they always have been. And if you've got a kid, they're really concerned about your kid's health and safety because if you've got a kid, you got to put the kid in the car seat, then put him in the back seat, then there's a wreck, then the airbags come out, and the good ones, they jettison the car seat from the car, then a parachute comes out, and the kid gently floats to the ground like the beginning of I Dream of Genie because <laughs> the government is very, very concerned about your children's health and safety, and seatbelts are a big part of that. Mm -hmm. Really? Uh -huh. Ever seen a school bus? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, the yeah. only seatbelt there goes around the 50-year-old parolee driving the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That dude's strapped in like he's going to lethal injection. <laughs> Meanwhile, the kids are in the back flying around like lottery balls. No. <laughs> Your government does not make you put on a seatbelt to protect you. They make you put on a seatbelt to control you. Uh -huh. They make you put on a seatbelt because it's the only tangible way they can physically tie you up during the day. How about... <laughs> <laughs> Click it or take responsibility for your own health and safety because this is America and not some fascist regime. What are you saying, Og? You saying you're against seatbelts? You're damn right I'm against seatbelts. <laughs> I went out with this one girl. Can I say this? Yeah. Sure. Get a load of this. I'm on a date. I was out with this girl, right? Here's what she says. It's true. She says, oh, I did something she didn't like. She goes, oh, you just lost some points. <laughs> oh, there's points involved. <laughs> it's a point system that the women have. It's a point system. Men, we don't know what's going on. All we know is it involves points, and all of a sudden, we're down. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I was doing my impression of her mother. <laughs> She's like, oh, you just lost some points. I'm like, really, how many did I start out with? <laughs> Don't ask any questions. You're just going to lose more points. Well, transfer my account to your younger sister. <laughs> Lord Red is a fine young comedian. Uh, are you a health yeah. guy? You run, you look very slender. And uh, I'm not a, a big health guy, although I'm healthy. I just uh, had a complete physical, and uh, unfortunately, I'm at that age where you get the real intense physical. No, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. You know, I hope I'm not sharing too much, but mm -hmm. the doctor actually stuck a camera. In my rectum. Oh. It wasn't part of any procedure. He just suspected that his nurse was stealing from him. <laughs> you don't say we didn't warn you. Oh, my God. There's laughter ahead. This hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. How you doing over there, buddy? You all right? 
Ed is opening some stuff over here. Yeah, okay. what'd you get? What'd you get? You got a lot of boxes. That one yeah, box looks like a shoe. A shoe I don't boxes. know what's in there. I'll have to open it up. Oh, well, exciting. That's, exciting. That's, that's Did never you gonna order happen. something and forget? It's never, ever going to happen. I ordered a whole bunch of stuff, so I'm not sure which one's in there. It's just kind of... <laughs> so we'll see. I'm certainly looking forward to when that. something arrives, you go, what did I get? I don't remember. It's I like do a that all gift the time. <laughs> we were talking about prisons earlier because some gentleman got out of prison and immediately robbed a semi-trailer full of, full of Corvettes. Yeah, he stole a trailer, a tractor trailer. He didn't know the vets were in there, but he wanted to get home. And then Tom and asked. A ride. And then Tom asked. The guy got a, 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 a the same day practically. Yeah. So do, you, do you get to go back to the same prison? Do you get the same rooms? When you get so. to, uh, we're getting uh, email from from people in prison. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is from uh, Thomas. Hey Thomas. This is all it's uh, subject. Prison. Okay. Mm -hmm. I work with a serial killer. Oh, oh man. Every day we make we make license plates. Okay. That's it. This sounds like a cry for help, is what I'm trying to tell How you. How about that? Yeah. You think you got a to bad job? To work along, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got a bad job. You think the guy next to you is uh, yeah. Yeah. in your cubicle or whatever? Yeah, you know, I... hey, At least he's not a serial killer, huh? Yeah, you know <laughs> a serial killer working with metal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and listen. Well, they're plastic now, so it's a little better. Listen to this. Would you care to uh, explain our uh, subset of listeners, Tom, that are called, uh, uh, what are they, blowhards or no no it Windbags. All? Windbags. That's it, Tom. Now, now, what, are, what, what does that entail? Uh, well, we make a lot of mistakes. Sure. Uh, doing the show on the fly. We talk a lot. So you have uh, sometimes just state things that are incorrect. So the windbags are the ones that correct us. We certainly appreciate it. And sometimes they're right. So long as it's stated with confidence, whether it's correct or well, not. Get a load of this. <laughs> This is my least favorite windbag of all time oh. from JR. Oh. Uh, dear Christy Lee and Jagweeds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Reptiles are venomous, not poisonous. He's right. He's right. Remember, if you bite it and die, that's poisonous. If it bites you and dies, wow. that's venomous. Good to know. Ah. This has been bothering me ever since I started listening to your show years ago. Tom mentioned a poisonous snake on your show, and he was wrong. JR from Michigan. Sorry. Very yeah, good. good. Absolutely correct. Yeah. But and we have corrected ourselves on that before, but the uh, some of those things I think are poisonous because they don't necessarily have venom. Their mouths are so filled with bacteria that that's what poisons your your blood. Uh, okay. Either way, I'm going to avoid them. Uh, are you? You had the story about a guy who owned two what were the Gila Gila monsters? monsters? Yeah, Wouldn't one you of like them. Would like to see Tom, they Tom come upon a Gila monster and see you know, is it some sort of scary little dance? I was with him once in Florida. Were you guys there too when we saw some iguanas? No. no. And he did not care for that. Iguanas. <laughs> iguanas you don't like won't the iguanas you? in the wild? You don't like them? Nope. <laughs> yeah, he, he was not happy that there was one, like, on the ramp that he was walking up. Uh, we went to a certain place on vacation. Was, I'll never go back because there were too many lizards. Is that right? <laughs> oh, God, it was awful. Well, in, It was paradise, but it was full of lizards. In the location's defense, it was called Lizard World. Okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I can describe Tom seeing the iguana in one word. <laughs> Mincing. Oh, really? Yeah. Was... Not a fan. What's he uh, didn't the... you guys have bearded dragons? or something? The boys did, didn't they? They had uh, some they, kind they of... They had some critter at some point, and... fortunately. I'm not sure if I turned the heat too low on purpose, but the thing died. So, Christy, oh. you, you like the reptiles, Christy? Sure. Yeah, I do too. There's not... There is very... There, I don't think there's an animal I don't like. If uh, somebody came in with a tarantula, would you let oh, it... Oh, I've had a tarantula brooch where it just sat on my... No, thank you. Oh, on my shoulder. <laughs> no, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Like a brooch or a hat or a yeah. hair deck. Once again, some guy up your hand and died from getting bit by a Gila monster. was in the news. Yes. yes. All right. and, and again, again, his, his girlfriend found him. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's extremely rare. Uh, not dying from a Gila monster, but having a guy with a Gila monster <laughs> for a pet having a girlfriend. <laughs> so uh, it's a nice story. Uh, but what else have you got, Christy? Well, we have an update on our story from New Hampshire. Officials there have denied zoning permits to the adult diaper spa uh -oh. following concerns from residents. CBS News reports the owner of the controversial diaper spa will not be allowed to operate the business out of her home in Atkinson. The spa was going to cater to adults who wear diapers and act like children. Residents spoke out against the proposed opening, citing concerns over traffic, property values, and the potential clientele that would patronize yeah, the business. Yeah, that's the issue. Come yeah, on. traffic. Yeah, how many yeah. people are you going to have? <laughs> I mean, I kind of feel bad for them. Uh, they need a place. There's people who are into this. I guess yeah. not my thing, but are you hurting anybody? I like that they have a place where they can go and do it. They're not doing it 
uh, you know. These are these are typically men who want to be typically. pampered and they mm-hmm. poop themselves in their diapers and they <laughs> sure. say, they what do they say, Chick? And... Chick, what do they say? Oh, God. Uh, change me. I'm dirty. Mm-hmm. There. Yeah, there you go. That would done a lot to any feeling. Um, <laughs> I, I'm disappointed. I, I think he likes to do it on his own. He doesn't yeah, like to be tired. I, I to, tried to retire. It the topic has arrived. To <laughs> I think the <laughs> city's, re- city's the city. This is ridiculous. They're making this decision. They're just being rash. They I sure mean, are. <laughs> I mean, it's see, that's much funnier. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, don't you feel bad for these people? I mean, uh, it's not they, like they're hurting anybody. No. No. Um, they deserve a spa. They need somewhere where they can go and be pampered. And I would think in Literally. New, in New, yeah. Yeah, in, in New Hampshire, wouldn't there... Do they make pampers that size? <laughs> they, they didn't hear you. Couldn't they go two miles out of town and do it there? It's better at this place than going to a hotel where we, the normals, have to stay every now and again. <laughs> Is that what they call us, the norms? Yes. No, I, I'm assuming if you're into this particular field, if you will... Josh, help me here, but wouldn't it be most likely that you'd, they'd want to use cloth diapers? I don't know about that. Because they'd want to be changed. They'd want... I, but, you, but they'd want to be changed from one disposable to another disposable. Do they... Ma- well, oh, okay. that seems to have no romance to it. Well, like Josh you said... You want a cloth diaper? I think cloth diapers invite diaper rash. I think that's no, but I'm saying one of the big uh, reasons they came up with disposables no, because I, no, they stay drier longer. But we're not talking about people who use disposable diapers because they need to. These are men primarily that... Have some kind of fed, fantasy you know and fetish. Yes. There's a chance it has whatever they grew up with, whatever they when they were babies, whatever imprinted on. Yes, them. yes. I think I would want a disposable. I don't want safety pins. No, uh, I would think that'd be part of the whole thing. The, the risk of getting a getting diaper rash. Or I, getting I think we're learning a little bit about pins? you if yeah, you were I one of these men. I think uh, I think you have some very definite ideas. That's right. I'm going old school. <laughs> <laughs> if I become a perv, I'm go. going old school perv. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> Don't, don't. I, I think if need be, wouldn't you wear an adult diaper? Of course you would. Of course yeah. you would. But see, these again, these guys are doing it the way this was. Wasn't this place like a hotel? You'd go there for the weekends and a spa, if you will. And it was a thousand dollars a day, right? Yeah, it wasn't cheap. Very, very mm-hmm. expensive. So, um, yeah, and obviously you have to have trained. Well, that'd be a gig, wouldn't it? What? Working, working with these guys. How would you find people that would want to do that? You, that's why it's a thousand bucks a day. There. You're paying them. No. Uh, oh, you're pay- they're paying the people to work there a thousand dollars a day. Well, the, the, I'm sure the facility is paying their people. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know the economics of it, but uh, I, I, again, I think that you get well, those- you know the economics of it is the the, the more exotic the fetish, the more you can charge. Ah, uh, sure. Deadwood, yes. Deadwood taught us that with the uh, the guy who liked to uh, lick the whores. That's yeah, boy. <laughs> he what? would lick. He would come come by at the same time every morning and lick the breasts of the whores. And then leave. That's the, all he wanted. The gem saloon. That's all he wanted. And they could charge him more. They charged him more. <laughs> That's oh. all he wanted to do. Oh. Oh. Isn't that something? Uh, this this uh, this says I'm sorry. Uh, prices start at a thousand. Uh, excuse me. Prices start at a hundred dollars an hour and go up to fifteen hundred for a twenty four hour oh, stay. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Twenty four hour stay. And it says it's described here as this this spa for um, people that want to be in diapers. It's uh, uh, they said that it's a bed and breakfast. <laughs> It's a nice breakfast of uh, <laughs> strained prunes. Oh boy! Uh, perhaps. Yeah, I, I guarantee it. Milk, probably, out of, milk in a bottle. I bet I they have adult-sized uh, high chairs. I don't see anything objectionable with. I mean, as far as fetishes go, laying on your back and uh, having someone change your underwear and putting powder on you. I don't. Yeah. I don't see why that would be. Uh, that would be. You know, kind of. I'd, I'd get. Mild. A, I'd, get <laughs> I'd get used to that. If the other, per, if the person cleaning you is into it, uh, it's yeah. completely victimless, isn't it? Right. Mm-hmm. And they're concerned about traffic? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> they, they say that's they what are. it said. I know. They I say know. they are, but no, they're concerned. Did you see in front of the city council, well, they're going to get a lot of traffic. What? <laughs> they're not going to get a lot of traffic. Okay. I How do. many people does this really affect? You can, this lady, you'll find out who to pay off. It's a zoning issue. You but have. They, but they're in New Hampshire. Can't they just go two miles in any direction and find themselves in the woods? <laughs> Well, she wants to do it at her house, I guess, to keep overhead down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. She must have a very nice house. Okay, what else you got? Uh, well, we had the gentleman earlier who stole the tractor trailer full of Corvettes. This guy has been injured in a car crash. Allegedly, he walked out of a Northern Virginia hospital and stole an ambulance to get away. 
Oh. Fairfax County Police said the man was one of five people who were injured when a stolen car crashed at the junction of Interstate 66 and Route 50 in Fair Oaks. He reportedly walked out of Fairfax Hospital in a medical gown with an IV still in his arm. That's right out of a movie. And drove off in a private ambulance, which was later found abandoned. Question. Police are still searching for the man. Is it real obvious where the siren is in an ambulance? I have no I idea. I've never been in the so. front seat. Just of an for the ambulance. reason you're asking, I would think. Yeah. So if I hop in one, n- not knowing what I'm doing, is can I just look around and all of a sudden I've got the thing flashing and can take Probably, off? Probably, I would think so. Because in a movie, that's what would happen. <laughs> Guy's got the IV coming out. Yeah, this is real life. I know this is real life, and I'm saying it would be really cool <laughs> and make it a lot more fun if the guy could <laughs> pop on the siren. <laughs> just for wouldn't you want to be doing that? Probably like your flashers. You have to hunt for a little bit, and then, oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. I well, bet there's a little... Oh, I'm sorry, did I answer your question? I think there's a little button that has a little <laughs> siren on it. You just push it, and it yeah, But the guy's in a hurry, Josh. I'm just, I'm just wondering, like, there's like a, a big red button. No, it, it says, in, in like, <laughs> like you're watching an episode of Batman, where it says, siren slash flashers. <laughs> yes, yes. You can't miss it. It should be on the roof of the car, right? Of the ambulance. Oh, Push so up. That's what they say. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, huh. I'm sure somebody it's will not, tell us. I, I almost guarantee it's not. But Click. I, I can't believe people. Are, uh, police are really still searching for this man, and they noted guns and narcotics were later found in the vehicle. So, uh, well, yeah. there are narcotics look, in an ambulance. Look anyway. for a guy with no sure. pants. By the way, uh, uh, how dumb is the guy who paints ambulance onto the ambulances? It's always backwards. <laughs> <laughs> it's get almost your, like they're trying to do. Get it together, pal. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sounds like a good time. Have you? I've never ridden in an ambulance, either in the front or the back, thankfully. Well, there's time. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. They're they're pricey, actually. Yeah, they, yeah, are. they are. I should know. Yeah, oh, I've really? been in one. Yeah. I've been in, yeah, I've been in one. Yeah. They are pricey. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't insurance cover that? Not always. Uh, not, yeah, not yeah. always. Oh. Huh. That's right. Remember when the ambulance used to be part of the hospital, and now they're Private. anybody can own an ambulance, I think, right? Josh? What? I could have an ambulance company? Josh, me and you. I think so. Amb- yeah. We've got yeah. time. We get, we leave here. <laughs> what, we go to the ambulance company. We, we'd be like well, Mother, Mother Jugs and Speed. <laughs> what would what do you, you think? What would your ambulance company be called? Party uh, bus. <laughs> mm. it's, I think you got to give it something with a little gravitas. Something about shock. Uh, shock. Uh, we're here to shock you. A lot of hairy hunks. Two hairy hunks and hairy, hairy hunks and in an ambulance. Yeah. Oh, kind of like the uh, the like college the, hunks. The, the, the right, movers, right. Two men in a truck. Yeah, yeah. two, yeah. two, yeah. Well, <laughs> two doofuses and your <laughs> your soon to be corpse. Because yeah. we don't know what we're doing. Yes, yeah, a- ambulance slash hearse. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How fun would it be to fly through traffic with the uh, siren on? That'd be fun. All right. I, I knew a paramedic, and they said that they can actually get pulled over. If 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 a, police, really? if a policeman around. wanted to, they could pull over a speeding ambulance. Can you imagine? <laughs> that, you was, that would be us then, yeah. Delta yeah. is offering a special flight that will allow passengers to experience the upcoming solar eclipse from the sky. The this airline. is a cool idea. Well, of course say. it's from the sky. Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, you could be sitting on the plane, I guess, on a tarmac. <laughs> <laughs> what if you get the middle seat? Oh, <laughs> The airline said the flight from Austin to Detroit on April 8th, 2024, will spend as much time as possible directly within the path of totality and give those on board a chance to view the eclipse at its peak. Created especially for the experience, Delta Flight 1218 will be specifically operated on an A220-300 aircraft, which offers extra large windows. Passengers will need to have protective glasses, as we all will, to safely view the total solar Listen to me now, this plane... Is not coming back. That's right. Uh, this is the Langoliers. Yes, it's, in, it's going to be. Oh, in live. <laughs> this is going to go through a ripping time, exactly. and we're never going to see these people again. This is what airline? Delta. I want to do the Alaska Air one. Why? Because the door is off. More, you can see better. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Boy, they're, never, they're never going to live that down, are they? <laughs> it wasn't their fault. Everybody's okay. Calm down. This is a great, I mean. Hey, the door's missing. Just calm down. I have a dumb question. Obviously, all this prep for the... Eclipse, yep. Uh, very weather dependent. Not if you're on the, the eclipse is the eclipse is going to happen. But right. so my question is, can this is this plane going to be above the clouds oh, in the yeah. event of? Well, of course. Of course. What a what? stupid <laughs> question. 
Of course it's above the clouds. You know, if we would have flown above the clouds, Captain, we could have seen the eclipse. Most he planes. hits his forehead. Can they, You're can right. they always do that? I mean, yeah. <laughs> can they always fly above the clouds? I don't know the last time you're on an airliner, but they usually fly 35,000 feet, which is well above the it clouds. It is. They I, fly I, at 35,000 with not even trying. Yes. Hey, I'm sitting in the aisle. I can't see anything. Uh. <laughs> Did you really just say that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, so I'm most seriously, what are they, are they going to? Are people going to have to... We just have to pray for clear weather. That There's nothing you can do. I'm not being a smartass here. Why is this one special again? Stop being a smartass. Because I'm sorry. It's a total. It's a total solar eclipse. And it only yeah. happens and the one. totality This is a once-in-a-lifetime deal? Well, it, for this, this area. This area. It's, it's, there's a swath of the United States. I want to say it goes from, what, Mexico, kind of through Texas and up, up through there. Ohio and... Up through New England, I think, right? So it'll, it'll be totality for a few minutes and... It, a lot of businesses are closing. It's going to be a big deal. What? It's a big deal. Oh, yeah. Businesses are closing. Yeah. yeah. We, How are we to conduct commerce? Schools are closing. What about, are you going to want to be having lunch when the dragons come up out of the middle of the earth and uh, <laughs> swallow us all? That is a fair point. Thank you. It's going to be cool. But yeah. I just, I'm just, if you're on an airplane. The airplane would be the one place you could guarantee you would see it. But isn't it up that way? Or aren't you Not just... if you're in an aisle seat or the captain's flying below the clouds. Well, no, listen, Captain Douche. How are you going to see it because you got to. <laughs> yeah, you have to crane your I, neck. I don't understand. Isn't it up? Are, are they going to the tilt, Delta, are they gonna tilt the plane? It's in the story. The Delta plane they're using has extra big windows. Yes. That's, but yeah, but are they above? Yeah, but isn't the thing... Aren't I'd you, want a clear ceiling. Don't you have to look? Yeah. <laughs> that's what you need. This yeah. plane does have a glass... Uh, a glass top? You need one of those whirly birds. <laughs> with the, <laughs> yeah. Can those, those go that... Can they go, can they go that high? Because oh. normally it's uh, an aquarium and fish are swimming. <laughs> but for the, uh, the eclipse, they're going to empty the tank so you can see right through the... I'm sure you could tilt the wing a little bit on one side, right. tilt the a little bit on the other Is, side. That's exactly my question. Are they going to pay if you're on the left side of the that. plane? Right you know, we're all excited about the eclipse. You want to watch it the most uncomfortable way possible <laughs> with people vomiting near you? <laughs> you and planes. What you vomit happened? on a plane? No, but I'm just saying if they're going to be tilting, tilting it back it and forth down, so people can get a look. Josh is you uncomfortable like on fly, planes. Do you? They're never comfortable. They're great. Nope. No, no, they're, yeah. I'd rather be in a bus. And I love Oh, that's fine. For our next gig that we have to fly to, I'll make sure that you get the bus. They suck, yeah. man. Get You can't give us two more inches of seat. <laughs> Take out two rows. I, they're all they're just money grabs. Don't even get me started on it. I get I get legitimately furious about how sh how bad <laughs> <laughs> airlines are. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a big, I'm a big fan. Thank you. They're for children. There's there's no adult seat on a plane. Maybe they should unless do you want to pay an extra you. five grand. Maybe they should do the Lane Bryant airline. <laughs> they should <laughs> have a fatty fat fat fat. fat. Uh, how, it's how not I... my fault. My daughter works for the airlines. Okay. She mapped out the seat chart. That's right. <laughs> how, maybe a, a big and tall airline is what you're asking. I guess something. Oh, there your, are uh, certain airlines captain. now that are uh, giving. Uh, extra seats to bigger passengers. Well, see, that's the problem with me. I don't fall into that category, but I also don't fall into the thin, 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 thin category. So, so fat. I'm so, so fat. Nobody's better than me. Nobody's better than me. All I do, I eat jerk and eat jerk and eat jerk Take them panties off and put the salami on. Take me with the breadstick. Take me with the breadstick. Take me with the breadstick. Take me with the <laughs> yeah, it has been a while since we had that. <laughs> <laughs> so Let me sorry. tell you something, so Josh. Sorry. When you wrote that, you hit. You I, wrote a hit, baby. I, who knew? That is a hit. Oh, well. You guys uh, sit down in an airplane and go, ah. Yeah. No. yeah. I don't really have Only because I always fly first class. <laughs> <laughs> Baffling to me. I can't. I can't go back. I won't. You won't. I can't no, go back I to really coach. Can't. No, there's no way. Yeah, yeah. I, can't. Well, I just flew well, regular, regular, regular flight. I great. will mortgage my home to fly first class. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. I can't. I've, got, I've honestly gotten pretty good at sleeping on planes, so it's not that That's big of a deal. Are you, are you an aisle guy or a window guy? Window yeah. so that I can rest my head against yeah. it yeah. and sleep. What about Then what if you have to go to the bathroom? Oh, you just go right there next to the window. You wear a diaper. Come on. <laughs> it dribbles down. I wake up and go, excuse me, I have to use the restroom. And the person next to me grumbles. And, and you go ask uh, first? Ask to their face when you... Oh, no, no. It's... it's you, you, okay. you have to make the decision. I go pecker to nose. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> hey, let's uh, let's, let's come back and take a break. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, we'll give you more information about the all I do eclipse. is turkey, 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 turkey. So so fat, I'm so so fat. I'm the fattest, I am fat. Nobody's fatter than me. Nobody's fatter than me. Nobody's fatter than me. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Catch any part of the show you missed later today. Now, Rodney's uh, uh, got a record out there on Capitol Records. Yes. Can't miss it. It's called Morning Wood. Morning Wood. Just kind of sticking with the theme. It's hanging with Rodney, Morning Wood, and then Nutsack. Just kind of <laughs> working our way down the, the trilogy. It dawned on me this morning how, what, you know. Yep. I've made a living for 12, 13 years talking about everything underneath my belt. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, uh, hey, what the hell? <laughs> I'm glad you said hell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I apologize. Well, uh, that's all right. Uh, well, uh, mm -hmm. Rodney, we got uh, we got plenty of time. Do you want to work another one in here? Uh, yeah, here's one right here. This one's called, uh, well, I think, you guys, is that the one we're talking about? Okay. You guys want to play the intro? I don't want to. They get a little irritated when I <laughs> don't let them play the intro. They don't really like the way I do it. Let's yeah. just go right to the words. Uh, go ahead. Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven baked cheese. It arrives pre baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with it? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you.
and I catch him, and I go, thanks, Mean Joe. <laughs> I knew that was coming. And he goes, and he goes, what? what? Yeah. Oh, and I go, no. oh, man, that's, the, that's one of my best riffs ever, oh, yeah. falling on his deaf Gaelic ears. Yeah. 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 Bob and Tom, 24-7. Oh, yeah, yeah. By the way, I should mention I'm on my way to Louisville, Kentucky. To when are you going to start there? I'm going to start there Wednesday night. Well, you sure are early. I'm way early. <laughs> you taking a Conestoga nope. wagon I'm there, going, Sam I'm Houston? Going back, I'm going back home. Okay. Well, that's a, a heck of a way to on. get to Louisville. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a roundabout way. <laughs> but it's it's that wife, isn't it? She's making you come back home. No, she isn't making me come back home. I, I, I want to go back second. home <laughs> because of my wife. <laughs> she likes his wife. You know, I actually have a... Who doesn't? That's... Yeah, we all hey. like it. <laughs> okay, all right. Look yeah. at him. We can't wait till you go to Louisville. <laughs> Jeez. We're all going to Chicago. Haven't you seen, I haven't you seen this? On 65. <laughs> <laughs> haven't you seen her website? <laughs> Theothermen.com? Oh. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yikes. <laughs> Let's put that up right now. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, I'm just I'll kidding. I'll call your bluff. Yeah. Tim Cavanaugh, sorry, guys. You need a password, wife. Tim. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and a charge card. Yeah. You can use Christie's. <laughs> like, you can't get a regular cheeseburger in L.A. Like, if you get a cheeseburger at a restaurant in L.A., it's always a burger that was happily raised right. by the owner's barber, Jeff. <laughs> spelled G-E-O-F. Of course, yeah. I just want a cheeseburger. I want a burger made from a cow <laughs> that was born and raised to be a burger. <laughs> All right? I don't want a burger with dreams or hope. <laughs> I want a burger that knew the deal. And I want a cheese that is 40% plastic. <laughs> All right, I want a cheese that when I poop it out, I poop out a keychain. Bob and Tom, well meaning, but yeah, they're they're. Oh. That's what I say. Scare them. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Talking about everything today: airplanes and ambulances and yeah. prison. Yeah, we and we we started talking about pants. Played the great song from the great band Here Come the Mummies. Uh, called pants mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Pat, uh, pay attention here for a second. Pat right. Godwin's through the room, uh, through the glass over there. Uh, I remember this story, and I, I just was uh, during the break. I, I dug it up. There's a guy named Chip Berg, and he's the CEO of Levi Strauss. And you may remember this about ten years ago. He made the famous statement, "Don't wash your jeans, freeze, freeze them." them. Mm -hmm. And then scientists explained to him that freezing them does not kill all the whatever bacteria. bacteria. So. Because um, his whole thing, his whole thing is don't don't wash your jeans. Well, now he's uh, he's come out and he's saying um, wear your jeans in the shower. Yeah, idiot. Uh, well, yeah, this is completely ridiculous. <laughs> yes. um, but it's getting a ton of publicity. So um, uh, he claims, and this guy's I'm sure filthy rich. He's the CEO of Levi's for God's sake. He claims he showers with his jeans on rather than washing them. Weirdo. Um, so uh, it says studies back Mr. Berg's reasoning for refraining from putting smelly, dirty jeans in the washing machine. It doesn't negate the fact that bacteria will continue to live on jeans even after giving them a shower. Um, I don't know about you guys. I I wash them the old-fashioned way. Yeah. In a washing machine. Yeah. They yeah. do just fine. They so, sure seem to. Don't yeah. yeah. They it's may kinda, fade over time. Yeah. But that's sure, it. but that's all right. That's I don't want that that hipster smell. Oh. Is there a hipster smell? You mean hippie smell, don't you? Yeah, yeah, really. Uh, but uh, in any event, uh, Pat, I uh, I know that you're a fan of Mr. Berg. Is that correct? Levi's boss says when he spills some tomato sauce <laughs> on his dungarees, no washing machine. No, he'd much rather take a shower in blue jeans, babe. <laughs> Denim unwashed. You keep wearing them till they gather moss. But I'd rather have them fresh and clean. Because you look like an idiot taking a shower in blue jeans. <laughs> Maybe someday I can buy jeans only once and just throw them away. But for tonight, I want clean clothes when I'm on a date. Sweaty crack. <laughs> Wash your jeans and dry clean your slacks. Unless the naked girl's with me, I'm never gonna take a shower in blue jeans, babe. <laughs> I 
That's right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you very much. Have you ever uh, tried to take pants off in the shower? No. That's going to be hard. Can't be easy. Can't. Boy. Um, but, uh, that's that's what oh. he recommends, so. Well, yeah, I no thanks. That, m- maybe he expects you to wash them and then stand outside while they dry. Yeah, I, no kidding. I, <laughs> I, there's a Raquel Welch movie called Hanny Calder, where she becomes a gunfighter. Could you go outside more? Shut up. And <laughs> she, to get her jeans to fit, she puts on a pair of jeans and gets in the tub and has them shrink to her. <laughs> oh, yeah, I bet that's a sexy well, scene. Yeah. That used to be a thing back in the right. day. Yeah. Remember when you'd get sure. Levi's and you'd have to wear them like three or four times to yep. get them to fit? They weren't pre-shrunk. There was a time. Okay. Well, yeah. um, there's also an amazing song called Jeans On by David Dundas that I remember. It was a top 40 hit. <laughs> jeans On. Jeans On. Jeans On. I don't know. Jeans On. I don't know how it went, but I remember the title jeans and, on? and the artist. <laughs> David Dundas. Gosh, and jeans you have on. I uh, don't remember that one. I remember jeans on and Forever in Blue Jeans. It can't be any good. I know that. What about Gene Genie? Jean the Jean face is a mess. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's a great song. <laughs> David Bowie. Billy Jean. Not She's my lover. That's a <laughs> name, a not a piece of clothing. But Tom. I'm surprised someone hasn't licensed it for a pair of jeans. The Billy Jean? New Billy Jeans. Zipper in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think Is if Michael time for our uh, second Beatles song, if there were, <laughs> any second, if there's any jeans company using a Michael Jackson song, it's Oshkosh Bagosh. Oh, 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 or animals, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Right. Uh, <clears throat> like the young boys. Uh, I see. He was a monster, but uh, <laughs> we like his okay. songs. Uh, the songs are good. <laughs> <laughs> Do you suppose this guy, I mean, do you, does this Levi's guy really walk around with dirty jeans all the time? No. No, I think he gets a new pair every day. Yeah, exactly. He, he probably has a whole there. office full. Okay, all right. What do you guys like, stone washed? Remember that look? I like a dark, uh, I like a dark jeans. Of course. I do too, dark I like wash. an acid wash. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. What, which, uh, what are those now? They were hideous. Uh, overly uh, like bleached, wild, almost. Hideous. Overly yeah. faded, yeah. They just look kind of like your shirt. <laughs> How about um, those yeah. ones that come yeah. pre-ripped? Oh yeah, that's a cool look. Oh yeah, it? <laughs> actually very popular. I've got plenty of those. Still popular. Uh, no, not from I buy. I rip them myself. Oh. Uh, now, uh, what else have you got over at the news desk? Oh, are we going to hear a Beatles song or? No? Oh, you got one, Pat? It's, sure, I told now, you. You have to explain yeah, we the setup. We got to double up here. The, the yeah, setup on this. I'm sorry. The Beatles yeah. are going to be part of a biopic. There are going to be four separate biopics about all four Beatles, Paul McCartney, John Lennon, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr, coming out in 2027, directed by Sam Mendes. Is that how you say that? Yeah. Yeah. And, I, it's um, just not Menendez, which is what, oh, what you embarrassingly said earlier. Oh, about the Menendez yeah. brothers? We were sort of humiliated yeah. for you. The films are expected yeah. to roll out in 2027, <laughs> but they're going to be set, there are going to be four different films, but they do out. have the blessing of the the Beatles and their family. Whatever, okay, whatever, Mushmouth. Okay, now I'm, I'm trying to find uh, this song's uh, a chick. I found Jean Genie, of course, David Bowie. Did I'm, you find you? David found Dundas and Jean's on? That's man, is that a great song? She is on. Now, before you get distracted, I thought we were talking. We just about set up Godwin <laughs> song. No, no. If anything, <laughs> this is my job derailing this show. Which, by the way. This does not require a setup. Hey, Pat, you're going to do a song about each Beatle this morning. Yeah, do one now. Go. No, no, there you, you go. know go. Tom's quote. <laughs> there it is. That, that. This is David Dundas and Gene's on. I am the wolf man. I'm... <laughs> when I wake up, I, wake I know up this. In the morning light. I remember this song. I pull on my jeans and I feel that, uh, all right. That electric piano thing had it, it, uh, quite the life. It there sounds like Leo a Sayre. A little bit. It little does. A little bit. That uh, what was that the uh, Leo Sayre song? When I need you, no, uh, I feel that, like dancing. That's yeah. the one. That's what it sounds like. You know what? Wonderful. What happens with the, the do the jeans song. come off? Is there some kind of uh, I think he's very being very ambiguous? Chick, that is so close to something Juice Newton would do <laughs> that you are no longer allowed to criticize Juice Newton. He's the one I suggested we play that turd. No, I think uh, what he's saying is that uh, I was making fun of Juice Newton. I think I you're mean, exactly correct. That's essentially a Juice Newton. Yeah, song. essentially. <laughs>
<laughs> she could she could sing the hell out of that. That's an unusual name, Dundas. Dundas? No, it's not Dundas. You. <laughs> Hey, David Dundas. <laughs> you, you stupid oh, Mike. Oh, I, I didn't know he went that way. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you play that, that or is that for Oh, yeah. No, I played that in uh, Welch, West Virginia. I sure did. It sounds fun. Snappy. <laughs> this, this is only hit? Well. I, I'm guessing so. Am I going to Wikipedia that with a sad ending? Okay. <laughs> We're getting complaints, you know. Yeah, right. Uh, right. The, the affiliates don't want to hear this. Okay. Uh, when, when we come back, we have a surprise. What about our Beatles? Surprise. Well, we'll get to it later. Uh, Pat, you just keep practicing. Maybe you'll get this one right. I almost just threw uh, my coffee at you. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Get a look at today's show on our YouTube channel. moment where uh, my girlfriend thought she was pregnant mm -hmm. and by the way if you know ladies if you're uh if you suspect that you're pregnant tell the guy during the day don't wait until you're about to go to sleep mm -hmm. oh. you know because that's what she did she's like i have a cramp i'm like, oh i might be pregnant good night huh? i'm like no <laughs> night. i don't think so i go well, well let's find out well what are you gonna do so i you know hauled butt to walmart yep and uh um, got, a test. got yeah. myself a little test doctor yeah, in a box two, yeah I know. two o'clock uh -huh. in the morning and of all the times to get recognized you uh -huh. know, I walk into Walmart in the night shift. <laughs> hey, yeah. Fluffy. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> what do you need? A miracle. Uh -huh. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> All right, here's some tickets to a Grateful Dead concert. <laughs> right? right. <laughs> so I found the aisle where they sell the pregnancy test, and I realized something. Walmart has figured out the evolution of how life works, and yeah. they put it in aisle four. As soon as you turn the corner, you see condoms. Uh -huh. Then you see lubricant. The next to the lubricant, you see pregnancy tests. The next to that, you see pampers. Next to that, formula. Oh, and yeah. at the end of the aisle, they sell beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a full circle. Hi, man, it's Donnie Baker. Guess what? I saved up some money and bought this new badass spy camera. I swear to God I did. Check this thing out. Man, they got so much stuff in here. This is badass. I swear to God it is. You wouldn't think a radio station have so many pictures. Hi, right, look. It's Bob and Tom. Man, something about that don't look right. Let's see if we can make it better. One down. Perfect. Hi, Christy. Hey, what are you doing here, Donnie? You're well, not, you're not allowed back here. No, it's Homeland Security. I'm supposed to come back here and check you for humps today. Because, you know, you're not going to get your hands on me. Okay, you if you don't that? like this one, how about let me use this one? <laughs> You know, the touch of a whiff is a healing touch. No, no, no. Uh, better yet, how about fur on fur? I watch a lot of news. Uh, by the way, my favorite news channel is CNN Headline News. Is it? Because uh, there's, no, there's no segue between stories. They nope. go from polar opposite A to B <laughs> with nothing in between. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what the future looks like with a nuclear North Korea. <laughs> Coming up next, a boy in Pittsburgh collects nickels. <laughs> <laughs> like the news for people with ADD. We're all going to die. Hey, a horsey. <laughs> Squirrel. <I'm gonna laughs> but these are some news stories that I, uh, can, uh, I, uh, I noticed over the past... Uh, several weeks. Can mm -hmm. I, can sure. I yeah. share some? Sure. Uh, a woman in England pled guilty to disturbing the peace with her noisy lovemaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, she said guilty, but you could totally tell she was faking it. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Sure. A company in Ireland created the world's first ever uh, green technology vibrator mm -hmm. that's powered by winding it up. Mm-hmm. Which means basically, it's a jack in the box. Technically, it is. Bob goes. Sesame Street turned 40 years old sure. mm. last year, which you could tell because uh, Big Bird uh, got an earring and a Corvette. <laughs> <laughs> Life is the way it ends, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm.
With a death. What's that, a bonus? <laughs> no. Life is tough. It should be reversed. You die first. Get it out of the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then you live in an old age home. You get kicked out when you're too young. You get a gold watch. You go to work. You work for 40 years till you're young enough to enjoy your retirement. <laughs> go to college, you do drugs, alcohol, you party, you get ready for high school. <laughs> go to school, you become a kid, you play, you have no responsibilities, become a little baby, go back into the womb, spend your last nine months floating. Uh, you finish off as a gleam in somebody's eye. Oh, uh, nice. <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. That's perfect. Bob and Tom. For your information, these are two of the worst kids I have ever encountered in my life. And I worked the state fair. We were stupid before stupid was cool. Jim, we mentioned that you are a tall man. Yes. Six, 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 huh? six, six. Are you uh, a single guy or married guy? I just got married. Oh, congratulations. Yes. How's, how's that going? First timer? Yeah, first timer. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, How about uh, that? I'm learning, you know, very slowly. I'm learning, you know, uh, like, you know, when uh, women get married, they take the guy's name, and I'm learning that us guys are also given. My, my married name is somebody. Somebody's got to take the trash out. <laughs> <laughs> At first I was like, is she talking to somebody else? Is somebody else here? Uh, somebody. Shouldn't we be on a first name basis by now? <laughs> well, someone's going to have to go to the hardware store. <laughs> somebody's going to have to put this table together. Uh, well, exactly. you know how high school sports teams always end the uh, season with a banquet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they should have done that with World War II. So here it is, the World War II victory celebration. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed dinner. Sorry the sushi was accidentally cooked. It's from Nagasaki. <laughs> oh, hilarious. Uh -huh. Hey, we told the time. Japanese they didn't need to bring anything, but apparently they wanted to surprise us again. <laughs> I don't get it, France. How could you be that unprepared for the Germans? I knew they were up to no good when even during World War I, they were calling it World War I. <laughs> Stocky Economopoulos uh, is our guest. A Maryland burglar broke into a house, robbed a couple at gunpoint, and then forced them to play their piano so he could sing along. He was arrested for <laughs> armed robbery, wanton endangerment, and aggravated karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Love Hewitt says she actually enjoys looking at her breasts on the Internet. Huh. Well, then I should call her. Apparently, we have a lot in common. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Apparently. The National Museum of the Native American Indian is open in Washington, D.C. Unfortunately, they now have to move it to Oklahoma to make room for the Christopher Columbus Museum. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say we didn't warn you. There's laughter ahead. This is... Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. The marvelous Christy Lee at the news desk. Oh, I love you. Are you giving her, you're giving her a hard time? No, 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 yeah, no. Is. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hello, Chick. Hey, don't don't bother. All right. There's Josh Arnold. Uh, yes, Pat Pat cussed me earlier. In the <laughs> There's Ace <game. laughs> Scott. You're being a snot. Well, <laughs> I'm Chick McGee. And I brought those in, and you're welcome Tom to them, Griswold. Pat. Remember, Pat can't eat anything right now. He's on some diet where he can eat, like, Raw vegetables. Or something. I know. Uh, now, uh, uh, welcome back to reality. Now, for the rest of us, uh, we have um, a couple interesting things coming up, including sexy time with Allie Breen. Let me try to irritate you, Tom. May I? Uh, <laughs> uh, Thank you, you. You already have. Okay. <laughs> Dear people, you were talking about a criminal hall of fame. Oh. We were. It's called the Alcatraz East Crime Museum in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Well, you'd think that'd be in the San Francisco yeah, area. So. <laughs> it has John Wayne Gacy's clown costume. Oh, jeez. Oh, his, his wallet. Oh, boy. And other personal items, along with Dahmer's glasses and handcuffs. Oh, boy. Ugh. And Ted Bundy's Volkswagen. <laughs> Van, you yeah. know. Wow. It's a grisly display. Oh. Would you help me with this couch? I broke my arm. That was his. Uh, he game. had a bug. Hammered Vanity. Wait, is there a van? Bug? Is there a vanity plate on it? This is the uh, this is the beetle that he had, the Volkswagen Beetle. Uh, what would you think the vanity plate of Ted Bundy might say? <laughs> um, bite you later? Yeah, or eat uh, me? I don't know. Oh yeah. Oh, he, he did, uh, uh, now, but you asked a good question, which was at, at prisons, do they have for the famous prisoners after they retire? 
do they have a, a ring of honor or a hall of fame? Do they retire their number? Right. Or do you have a big banner up there, Al Capone? And I uh, received several email from uh, uh, prison officials and, and people who work in penal colonies, mm -hmm. and they said the the number that you are issued uh, at, it is never used again. Numbers are not reused. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Aren't they running out? Well, no, but there's like nine, are infinite, but uh, nine <laughs> digits or whatever it is, so they it's wouldn't gonna run out. A, it's going to be like area codes. Remember, they ran out. No, it's not. Oh. The prison does, does your number start with your area code? Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah, they look up where you were arrested and then where you lived, and the higher number goes at the. There's start no way of they ran out of area codes. Of course not. There's he no one one one. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's talking. Yeah, they ran out of area codes. No, there's no way. No, That's possible. too many numbers. It. Why do you think they so many cities had to change them? For, for, I, I, not because they ran out. <laughs> there's a code they couldn't have. There's no area code zero zero three. What are you, saying? <laughs> like, but, you know, you know where Edison lived. I think zero zero one. <laughs> <laughs> now I want to talk about. So I want to change the subject for a second. Uh, I don't know if you heard about this. I but, don't know uh, if you heard about this. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Tricks Dick. Uh, there was a uh, Wait a minute. there was a, a show that was, I guess, a big hit. There was uh, The Bachelor. Yes. Then there was The Bachelor in Paradise. Of course. And then there was The Golden, Golden Bachelor. Bachelor. The Golden Bachelor they're coming up. Now they're going to do now the Golden Bachelor. Explain the premise of this, Christy. The gentleman was uh, seventy-one, I believe, oh, and all of the ladies that were vying for his love and attention were sixty and over. Okay. Might have been fifty-five and over, actually. Um, but they were of Ugh. a certain age. And now, Fifty-five. And now they're, oh, they're, they're, switch, they're switching it up now. <laughs> Seriously. Yes, the Golden Bachelorette will debut this summer. No, so how, that'll be one woman and Fine. then a bunch of a bunch of dudes of a certain age. Talk about right. a bad taste in your mouth, am I right? <laughs> oh, Chick, right. I think you should do this. What's happening? Why don't you become a contestant on the Golden Bachelor? So please, I think it's too. So please. Handsome. Please. I don't. I, I don't think it's. I don't think it's. Uh, You've got time. It's, it's too late. You? you think this? This show's already off the ground. Yeah, but that, didn't they do thirty seasons yeah. of yeah. The Bachelor? Sure. Oh, you yeah. want to? You want me to do the next one? Would you rather yeah. be a contestant on the Golden Bachelorette, or, or would you rather be the Golden Bachelor and oh, have the women? Oh, there we go. That'd be better. Oh, I think. God. You need to be the Golden Bachelor. I think I would rather be the Golden Let Bachelor. Let them yes. come to you. You'll pick yes. up twenty-five women. Two. I would like to pick amongst. The coups, if I could. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> Yeah, they're not going to get hired tucking like that. No, you might. I mean, oh, yeah, I would. You'd be bold and direct. Some be kind bold. of. Bold, yes. Like a, I want to be bold, Pat. A lesser cable oh. channel oh. would do this. Really? I yep. shall sample the coups. I am available. Coo, the coo. Is the word coups? Is that what you're using? Coups. I'm not that's familiar with this. Is that, uh, it's, oh, it's, Tom. it's used. It's, it's popular. If oh, you have word. any friends at ABC right now, please contact oh, them and happen. tell everybody you know that Chick should be our next. No, you know they do a bachelor. background check. So? Oh, geez, they're going to find anything me. bad. Well, yeah, not, yeah, not that bad. Well, 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 hang on a second. Let's talk. I'm not sure they want someone that's of considered bad. a veteran <laughs> of your stature. <laughs> what are you talking about? You, you mean the three marriages? Line. The three marriages? <laughs> yeah. The, were... the dirt floor upbringing? Is that what you're talking yeah. about? It's a great storyline. It might be perfect. Yeah. That's yeah. right. It's yeah. my yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, and this week's episode is called Where's the Nitroglycerin Tablet? <laughs> no, no. This story. Well. Oh, this, uh, yeah. this the golden bachelor is looking for the perfect partner unless that one girl calls. Then okay. it's all off. Well, now, hey, there we if go. We, if we look at the big screen, oh, my God. Totsy, Totsy. Hello again, boys. It's your favorite doll, Bobby. <laughs> hey, hey, Bobby, you got a little 5 o'clock shadow going. Oh, that's just the menopause. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I heard you talking about this new Golden Bachelorette TV show. Yeah, yeah. yeah the scene I was created in 1959, and I'm the star of the most popular movie on the planet. <laughs> I think I'd be the perfect candidate. Date to be the new Golden Bachelorette. Really? Oh, yeah. sure, sure, I still rock a two-pack-a-day Virginia Slim's habit, which hasn't helped my skin nor my voice. But on a positive, I am a 100% plastic doll, so my boobs are just as real as 90% of the broads I watch competing on the actual Bachelor. <laughs> that is one advantage of being made of all plastic. Under these clothes, I still have the body and figure of an unreal realistic half-stop 
old 19-year-old gal. <laughs> <laughs> so even at my ripe age of 64, my out-of-proportion breast, waist, and butt still look amazing. <laughs> well, thank you, Barbie. <laughs> so give old Bobby a shot, ABC. I'd be perfect for the role. Before you say no, here's a close second message to the fellas on the show. My nickname is Otis, because I go down quicker than an elevator on the Titanic. <laughs> Whoa. And I'll warn you right now, do not expect to be given a red rose without you first giving Bob the big O, you know what I mean? A little tit for tat, so to speak. Oh, all right, all right. And I'm not looking for another Ken. Sure, he's hot, but he has very little going on when it comes to the love equipment. Oh. Yeah, yeah, especially in the tongue department. Old Bob here is looking for a slobbering yodeler who can work me over like a speed bag in a dirty Bronx gym. <laughs> I need a fella who will tap it like he's drilling for oil up in the Serengeti. Are you picking up what Bob is throwing down? Yeah, I think so. Barbie, we're getting it. Yes, sir. I could go I mean, on all day, but I got to run Bob and Tom. It looks like the orderly is going through my purse again. Oh. Do not touch that, mister. That's the four horsepower digital. Digital Thrustmaster 2000. <laughs> Trust me, you're going to want to put on safety glasses first. It's on full charge. Press the wrong button and you'll put an eye out. <laughs> Don't believe me? Just ask my old lover, Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> so, ABC, give me a call. Your favorite doll, Bobby or Barbara, if you're nasty. Oh, thank you, Barbie. <laughs> nasty stuff. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Barbie. Uh, when does the Golden uh, Bachelorette? Uh, uh, it looks like late summer, with... early fall. We'll keep you posted on that. Okay. Now, is that show done as it happens, or are they doing it right now? I think they're doing it now. They, it's not while well, it happens. It's not live. Yeah, no. I don't think it is. Huh? People enjoy them. It's somewhat back to it's, yeah. This particular one really hit a nerve. The Golden Bachelor really hit a nerve with America. And, and uh, huge ratings, right? Yes. Yeah. As far as anything... did they actually, because I know in The Bachelor, they almost never hook up, right? I mean, they never get married at the end, right? They got married. They got married on TV. I miss this one, though. Yeah. Yeah. They oh, you sure did? did. They got married together? January 4th. There are, a lot of, there are a lot of these shows that they got married. I don't know where you There's got that. a show that. called Married at First Sight. Yeah. yeah. No, but I, 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 I thought in, in the history of the show, The Bachelor, there had been very few. Mm. No, there's been married no, shows, but you, they didn't work. You, you should oh, just, all right. You should start using this phrase more often. In my mind, they never get married. <laughs> Well, I can them so we get some there stats. Uh, it's coming, coming this fall, apparently, from what I can find. Okay. So we'll okay. look forward to the go I think there might still be time. Well, there will be a new Golden Bachelor, so you need to... Stay tuned. <laughs> I wouldn't know how... I, yeah, you would be I, great. I wouldn't want to... Uh, I, I would I wouldn't, be great. I wouldn't want to seek it. If they want to come and talk to me okay. about something and, and talk to my man Ace and he, to get to me... <laughs> Dude, I think these, he'd be a shrewd negotiator. You would, you would these ladies that. would drive you nuts. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Maybe you guys. That's what would be so wonderful. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. Well, here's the thing. That you, first one, Daphne, yeah, she's dead. Okay. <laughs> you guys tag team it. Ta me and the Golden, or me and Ace. You and Ace. Is that right? <laughs> salt and pepper. Boy, <laughs> so call it the salt and pepper bachelor. <laughs> And we could hide behind. No, it's our it's our facial hair. We're oh, talking yeah, about yeah, salt yeah. and pepper. Yeah. Sure. We could do the Eiffel Tower thing. Oh. oh. Double high five, Ace. Well, I uh, am just troubled that you would spit mention roasting that. some lady. Yeah. Okay. Well, now let's uh, move on here. Uh, coming up, it's going to be a uh, sexy time with Allie Breen. We'll look forward to that, of course. Try to help help young lovers out there. But right now, uh, Chick. Simply safe. It's the do-it-yourself home security system. You guys know that. Sure. Advanced system protects every. Little bitty inch of your home and backed by 24 7 professional monitoring for fast emergency response for less than a dollar a day. If your home is threatened, trained agents jump into action for emergency dispatch and response. Simply Safe is trusted by the experts named Best Home Security System of 2024 by U.S. News and World Report. HD cameras for your home inside and out, advanced motion sensors, entry sensors, hazard sensors like fire, flooding, and ice simply safe system has also set up uh, yourself without any special 
tools or know-how required. Do it yourself. Design it yourself. But if you prefer, the option of having one of their expert technicians to come to your house and install it for you is available. Plus, with the 60-day risk-free trial, if you don't love your system, you can return it for a full refund. And for Bob and Tom Show listeners, order now to get 20% off any new Simply Safe system with Fast Protect monitoring. Just visit simplysafetom.com. That's simplysafetom.com. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Well, thank you very much. Check out Simply Safe. Read the reviews. They're great. Coming up, a couple of interesting things, um, including scientists have developed artificial testicles. <laughs> We're going to hear about that. Huh? Yeah. Artificial um, testicles in the news. This right. is the Bob and Tom Show. Hello, this is comedian John Evans, the High Plains thrifter, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Hey, good morning. I'm Mark Allison. Thanks for... You lost. You think you lost money in investing? My whole people lost money in investing. <laughs> Bernie Madoff came along and took. Oh, all, wow. Took, set us back ten thousand years. I hate that guy so much. I hate Bernie Madoff so much. Not and not for what he did, because I don't care about the rich. I uh -huh. hope they lose their money. But no, for how he looked physically. Did he have to look so Jewish while he was doing that? He's already the image of a Jew that's in every redneck's paranoid mind's eye. Just some crook nosed Jew on top of a pile of gold coins, swimming in it like Scrooge McDuck. Like, ah, I'm gonna take the ten thousand money. <laughs> <laughs> like, I always trip out when I see somebody that so fully embodies a stereotype like Bernie Madoff did. Like, when you see a nerd who's actually wearing a pocket protector, like, they don't even make pocket protectors anymore. <laughs> Believe me, I know. That guy had to go out and hand mold the plastic <laughs> resin to fit into his nerdy little pocket. Or when you're driving in traffic and somebody cuts you off and you look into the car and it is, in fact, an Asian woman, you're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you serious? Are you seriously going to be Asian right now? There are people watching you. I have a little bit of self-respect and don't be Asian. Like when I'm walking along and I see a quarter on the ground, I don't pick it up. It kills me not to, but I don't do it because there's people watching. Me. There are people watching. This. You don't want to reinforce the stereotype. That's correct. You got it. Oh, man. For real. Uh, uh, Moshe Kasher is our guest. I live, uh, I live in L.A. now. I live, in, I, started, I live near Hollywood. I live across the street from a 99-cent store because ah. comedy makes dreams come true. Yes. Yeah, they have a, they now have a, they now sell a 99 cent pregnancy test. Have you seen that? No. Yeah. How bad does one's life have to be? Like how far down the socioeconomic <laughs> ladder do you need to flop before the 99 cent pregnancy test seems like a viable health option? <laughs> the 99 cent pregnancy test when you kind of have to know. Uh. <laughs> so I bought one. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, why not? Just to see what would happen. I Negative. peed on the little stick. And? Turns out... I have hepatitis C. <laughs> <laughs> I caught it from Who the knew? test. <laughs> wow, cool. Now, are you an iPhone guy? I wasn't, and then I fell victim to the iPhone conspiracy, yeah. mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. which is the, uh, you know, I've decided my wife was an iPhone user. She's a Mac. She's the Mac one. We mm -hmm. are not compatible in almost every way. <laughs> and, uh, so your wife, your wife's a Mac person. You're a PC guy. Yes, yeah. Because you're an engineer. Isn't that typical? Yeah, yeah. Most engineers are engineers PC. Engineers like people. to get in and mess with things, and it's really hard to mess with things in a. In a yeah, in and a all the engineers here uh, in this building are, are PC people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you can get into the. Another the reason I don't socialize. With yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Well, they don't socialize. Period. So I don't. That's think true. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, there you go. But uh, for years, I've been trying to uh, get her to PC, and she won't. So she's had the iPhone. Forever, and I decided now I'm finally an iPhone user. I was I had a BlackBerry forever, but I'm now an iPhone. The iPhone people, it's it's a religion base. They are the Jehovah's Witnesses of the 21st century. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a cult. They come up to if you have a BlackBerry. This is what happens to you. Is that a BlackBerry you have there? Has anyone talked to you about the iPhone? <laughs> yeah. Have you accepted Stephen Jobs as your Lord and Savior? <laughs>
<laughs> Whatever. Punch buggy. Sometimes we see like a VW bug with its headlight out while we're going over railroad tracks. All hell's breaking loose. Up there. <laughs> Spinning around, crashing my window, breaking everything. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you ever been on a date where after a couple hours you find it nearly impossible not to say, Somebody kill me! <laughs> Jeff Rothpamp, so you're in airplanes all the time. You ever get the pilot who talks the whole time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and he thinks he's like a radio guy. You know, he thinks, hey, hey, everybody, is there your captain here in the cockpit? Uh, like, where else is he going to be? In the bathroom? <laughs> of course he's in the cockpit. And, and they're always telling us how many feet we're going up. I never got, I never understood that. Why, why, why are they telling us how many feet we're flying up? Mm -hmm. Because I'm a passenger, and he's busy going on about, uh, hey, we're going to be going to altitude, uh, 36,000 feet. Hey, I'm a passenger. Just go above the mountains and the trees. That's all I know. <laughs> That's all I need. That's all I know. Go high. <laughs> what do I care? I'm not writing this down. 33 or 36,000. <laughs> This magician's on stage, and he invites this guy from the audience to give him a sledgehammer. The magician says, I want you to hit me in the temple as hard as you can with a sledgehammer. <laughs> the guy goes, all right. So the magician lays his head down on his block of wood, and this guy hauls back. Bam! Pops this guy in the temple. Ten years later, the magician wakes up out of a coma in the hospital and goes, Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> Are the stars out tonight? I don't care if it's cloudy or bright. Because I'm blind. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Hi, this is Bob Kegel. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. There's Tom. Good morning. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Did a little homework. Is that right? <laughs> you were um, referring to the uh, David Dundas song about uh, yes. blue jeans. Mm -hmm. yes. Jeans on. He's Lord David Dundas. He's from uh, he's from the UK. Yeah, he's, he's but he's a titled titled, really? titled Englishman. Yeah, he's still out there. He's an oh. actor. Um, he is. had the one hit that I'd never heard until this morning. Nobleman, huh? Oh, well, thank yeah. you, thank you very much, Chick McGee. That? You're welcome. Um, now, uh, I think you missed this story. Did you hear the story yesterday about the lady in, in uh, Spain who claims that uh, <laughs> she, can, um, she can drip urine into her eyes oh. to uh, clear up her... Uh, Did you hear that? Stigmatism. Uh, I think I did miss that. Really I think, something. I think if I'd heard it, I would have remembered it. Uh, yeah, you probably would. A woman in Spain, it sparked controversy after claiming dripping urine into her eyes cured her myopia and astigmatism. Urine therapy is a form of alternative medicine popularized by British naturopath John Armstrong in the early 20th century. Cuckoo! Advocates of urine therapy, Josh, promote the application of human urine. What about feces therapy? For medicinal or cosmetic purposes. Among them, massaging one's skin and gums with one's urine and even drinking it. Gums. Yeah, yeah. Now, and again, do we do we know? Do you use your own urine or somebody yes, else? It says own one's own urine. Okay, because that there are people who think that you can use anybody's, which is why um, R. Kelly's Eye Care Center in Chicago uh, does really well. You oh, can, uh, you doing stop okay. by and uh, is that right? Yeah, yes, yeah, through the magic of urine, you can get you. <laughs> what kind of nut jobs buy into this stuff? It's amazing. You'd be surprised, Tom. Okay, well, uh, on a d dissimilar note, we have real science, and science. Uh, they have developed artificial testicles. Do you have the story? Yes, of course. Science news from the International Journal of Biological Sciences, where scientists have created what they're calling artificial testicles in a lab setting. I got to tell you, if for some reason I didn't have both testicle or either testicle, yeah, I don't think you'd miss it. I don't. Th I don't. I don't think I would. Would you miss a, miss a testicle? Yeah, I'd want something in there. No really? kidding. Instead of a flappy sack. You well, they. A I mean, they do. They do make. Um, yeah, I know, nudicles. but I don't. Nudicles. They're like a kind of a rubbery fake testicle. Yeah, but I mean. don't think I ever uh, am made aware that I even have testicles, let alone. Robert Schimmel, the late great comedian, said he would get a, a lotion dispenser put in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for one of his testicles? Yeah. The artificial <laughs> testicles developed by Dr. Nitsan Gonen. Huh? Hang on a second. <laughs> Spell his last name. G-O-N-E-N. -E so close. 
Okay. So close. <laughs> yeah. And it's a uh, woman. Dr. Go, Dr. Gonad, what, what, what are you it's working on? A woman. Uh, ironically. It's a woman. Yes. Well, Dr. Nitzan Gonad and her team. Women have gonads. Are tiny. The ovaries are gonads. You're a gonad. <laughs> <laughs> These artificial testicles are tiny artificial organs produced from real mouse testes. The artificial testicles successfully cultured in vitro for nine weeks. And from testy mouse. Sweet. <laughs> Really Scientists irritated. do not know, though, whether the artificial testicles will actually produce sperm cells. Well, I so, think that's a little much to hope for. Yeah, I would think so, too. But they're, they're starting with mice. This isn't... Yeah. In the future, Dr. Gonan plans to produce organoids using human okay. samples. Now, now you're just okay. making up yeah, words. Or, organoids or, or, not a thing. Or, or, organoids or. is a word? It is a word, but sure. it, they don't exist. Do you have like a tiny little scalpel if you're doing surgery on mouse testicles? Sure. You must. They yeah. got to be relatively tiny. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get those feet in the strap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and even the doctors. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. M. Mouse. <laughs> okay, well, I wonder, um, <laughs> do, 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 do they, <laughs> do you hang them from the back of little, if you're, if those little miniature pickup trucks, <laughs> you, can you get <laughs> truck nuts? For, you think Stuart Little, if he had a pickup truck, would have <laughs> little, 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 little mouse truck nuts? What, what, are, what are the implications of this, Christy? What are they? Heck, I don't know. That's, That's all the I thing. Got. Why would it matter? I don't know anything more than what I just read. The implication: to you. this could be think. done, for, I think, for medical tests. And I, I, don't I, think I this mean, the idea any... would be you could get. A, a, a new functioning testicle no, that's is what a, the idea is. I think that would be the goal. Okay. That's absolutely impossible. You never know. How can you put sperm in there? I mean, how is how are they going to artificially? Well, there's a lot of a lot of things in this world where <laughs> someone has said, how'd they get sperm in there? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Holy hell. Even I've said it. A lot, of, a lot of pervs out there. <laughs> I'm not sure, Christy, but this, I'm sure this is some medical science. It was I get it on my elbow? Science, science desk. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I hope everyone's happy. Why? We have the casting. Um, I don't know how current these numbers are or contact information is, but we do have all of that for the casting producer for The Bachelor and Bachelorette. There oh, okay. Go. If you'd like to somehow get yours truly on the show. All right. Well, I think you know. Oh, I'm going to be making again, a call later once today. Once again, I'm not participating in seeking this out. <laughs> if they come to me and want to talk... I might give them the time of day. <laughs> what if they come to you and say, we need a, a five-minute video of you explaining why you should be the next bachelor? <sighs> In fact, do it right Man, now. Man, I don't know. Would you seriously consider it? You wouldn't want to have the cameras around all what's the time. What's the What's the money situation as far as my? Uh, it's got to be decent. It's be my good. time. What are they? Uh, you get to go to California yeah. and live for it's gotta a while. Be better than in this a nice dump. house. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Probably stick in a nice hotel room. You could watch TV all day long, pretty much. That's what he does now. Why would that be it? What about, I'm Sensei. right here. Why are you talking about me as if I passed away? <laughs> Tom, well, you wouldn't. You, you get you to know meet what? some beautiful He's going to put the women. kibosh on this. He is. He's going to put No, no, you can do it. Well, it would be great for the show. I'd, I'd still get paid by the show, of course. Oh, sure. Oh, sure, he says. <laughs> well. Now, would you marry the woman? Well, it depends. Yeah, it depends. What on. did I say? I don't know. I don't listen. I'm up for anything unless <laughs> that other girl calls. Oh, then right. it's all canceled. You could be the first one who says, nah, I don't want to marry anybody. That'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like, why would I marry one of you when I'm now famous around the world and can yeah. get anybody? I got, uh, what's her face on speed dial, okay? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Okay. Uh, well, we'll see. I think, I think Ace might be more up for this than I am. I'm not old enough. Well, I Ace, think you are more than old enough. You're older than 55. The Golden I think, Bachelor. No, I think you got to be over 60 for the best. The Golden Master, you said he was 72. Wait a minute. You're yeah. saying you're not, over, you're 60 not over 60 either? Well, okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Right. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Well, now we have to get our second song from Mr. Godwin. Uh, now, the, this, is, choices. this is based on oh, the Beatles. Uh, it's the damn Beatles. They're apparently making a movie a about each one, each one of the Beatles. The damn Damn Beatles. <laughs> and you have a song about... Uh, I have a bunch of them, yeah. I have one one Ringo that's about Josh. I have two Johns I could do. Scared. Oh, we don't have a lot of time. Do you have a Pete Best one? Kind of a, <laughs> kind of what? A <laughs> Pete Best is not going to be featured. Well, was, you uh, want a short one? He was in the no, I'm kidding. We I, don't care. Pete no, Best, you see, was in the Beatle for that long. Would you like Scandinavian Wood or I'm a Boomer? Your choice. Uh, Let's do Sc it, Scandinavian. Here we okay. go. I 
once tried Ikea, or should I say, Ikea tried my patience. Huh? <laughs> Did the best that I could, is it any good, the Scandinavian wood? Oh, you put it together yourself, this goes here, that goes there. I'm finally done, and what I have is a three-legged chair. <laughs> I looked at my desk, oh, it was a mess, I must confess. So I lit a fire, it burns real good, Scandinavian wood. Oh, very nice. Less, than a, less yeah. than a minute. A Ended little, up burning it. Yeah. A little trip to Ikea. Thank you very much, Pat. Uh, now, we uh, turn back to the news desk with Christy Lee. Thousands of items are lost across New York City's sprawling transport network every month. Recently, things like a funeral urn, a welder's mask, a blender, even a human leg. Oh, my. That's right. Authorities say a human leg was found on a New York City subway track. NYPD told NBC4 that the leg was discovered over the weekend in the Concourse neighborhood of the Bronx. No details were released about the leg, such as whether it appears to be from male or female or the possible age of its owner. New York's medical examiner is now examining the leg to find out more details and potentially solve the is mystery. Is that Dr. Michael Bodden? He was uh, always the big guy for a while. Doing Forensic that. files? Yes. Yeah. So, so wait, th so this person has a missing leg? Yeah, the four-train service was shut down as a result Saturday, but later restarted in the afternoon, according to NBC You know what this is? Chick does. What? Uh, Chuds. Chuds. The cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers that oh, uh, right. roam was, the subways of New York a, City. A famous movie made about that. Some say it's a movie. I say it's a documentary. <laughs> yes. Ooh. These things exist, huh? Maybe the cicadas are bad. <laughs> a little, oh, they're bad. A little worse than we thought this year. <laughs> so, it's either chuds or mimics. So someone hasn't checked into a hospital in greater New York looking for... Maybe they can't, Tom. Yeah, come on. This come is on. a person did go. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's this is the leg, leg of a long dead. Yes. <laughs> oh, so you think you yes. think like, you think no one's gonna show up at the MTA lost and found? Going, hey, look, I, I fell asleep on the subway. Yeah, I was doing the butter churner on the roof of a subway. <laughs> I know the bed bugs have gotten bad, but come uh, on. <laughs> no, this is a that's a sad case. Something you think the bad. rest of this person's somewhere else? Yeah. I think it's the rat or food. Or been eating, yeah, mm -hmm. has been eaten, absolutely. Okay. Judge. Rats right. will eat people, won't they? Oh, sure. If you, yeah. Rats will eat anything. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Ugh. So you think, you think maybe this person, like, jumped in front of the subway and with 70% of their body kind of got aerosoled? Oh, I, I, <laughs> I don't. I think this, I is a, think so. this is a crime. Yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> this is a... something we don't need to talk Somebody about. Somebody was uh, late. Oh. And, uh, so they just, they just found the leg because... Yeah. So that's, that's, I mean, finding an arm is funny, but finding a leg is humorless. Oh. Mm. Ooh. Good <laughs> God. <laughs> see, Josh, the humorous bone is, is not in the, the leg. Is in the arm, you yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, there's not going to be a one-legged guy Humor's at the lost the and leg. found. Okay. Yeah. All right. South African authorities have blamed a ship carrying 19,000 cattle for stinking up Cape Town. Local officials launched an investigation into the smell that swept through the city earlier this week. Is, is, is Cape Town got its own odor anyway? I don't know. I've never been there. They you said don't it, know. It might smell like lilacs. I'm asking. Yeah. They said that investigators confirmed the source of the sewage smell blanketing parts of the city was actually <laughs> a ship carrying live cattle from Brazil to Iraq, that was docked in the city's harbor, or Iraq. Though the ship is expected to depart in the coming days, it became the target of animal rights groups who alleged the animals on board the vessel were suffering abhorrent conditions from the buildup of urine and feces along with disease. Yikes. We don't they keep the, the how many cows are there? 19,000. Oh, so they can't all fit in the poop deck? <laughs> no. Oh, boy. And you know they're not free range either. <laughs> You know, you know what I've always wondered about? What? You never hear about <laughs> Noah's Ark. I mean, come on. Come on what? Had to stink. Oh, sure. I bet it did, yeah. I mean, just you know, the elephants alone. So then you're buying the whole thing. Well, I'm just saying, if it did, if, if as, it, had as if it had happened. Well, I'm just saying, they had a lot of, a lot of 
poop to get off the. Yeah, that's a lot of. Well, but you can just dump it over the over the side. Yeah. So Ham and the rest sure. of Noah's kids or whatever. Yeah, they had shovels. Yeah, they had jobs to do. Heck all yeah. Day. Yeah. Every get up every day. And we weren't just there taking up space. You have to no. clean stalls get the, if you have get, horses. Get, get the straw. Get the yeah. Keep there. No. It'd be funny if those Somali, what do they call the Somali pirates, try to get this thing. I am your beef captain now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it will be more like, all right, look me in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I, am your, I am your captain now. Okay. Police right. in Pennsylvania say a burglar stole two quadrillion in Zimbabwean currency from a Bedford home. Which equals two American dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're high. Investigators <laughs> allege that the residence was broken into by an unknown individual who made off with several pieces of jewelry, silver dollars worth $20, $30 in loose change, and 20 Zimbabwe $100 trillion bills. 100 Now, what a joke currency. A hundred trillion dollar bills. The two quadrillion dollars. <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's two and 15 zeros issued during a period of hyperinflation are virtually worthless. <laughs> oh. The bills can be purchased, though, as a novelty for around $10 a piece. Yeah. Can you imagine? It sounds like a Dr. Evil thing. Yeah. Yes. Two quadrillion dollars. Zimbabwean dollars. <laughs> That's so sad. Yes. I'm not messing around with any of that silly nonsense currency. What are you those, dealing mm, in? Dogecoin. <laughs> <laughs> those make-believe countries. <laughs> I mean, if if it was worth the two quadrillion, would they bother with the uh, loose change yeah. that they grabbed? <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, we got we got forty quadrillion, and oh, and I got seventeen dollars and quarters. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Not a big crime. No. Uh, what else is coming up, Christy Lee? Uh, coming up, we have chaos at an award show in uh, Seoul. With it's the chaos. K with the K-pops, with the K-pop families. Oh, oh boy. Uh, everybody okay. loves the K-pop bands. We have a badger on the loose. We have the <laughs> eagles in the news. And oh, the badger and sounds good this bad. morning. And we got <laughs> sexy time with Allie Breen of coming we up. Do. We're going to talk about boobs and butts. Right now, if you're traveling, we've been talking about traveling a little bit today. Uh, you want to make sure that you travel with your Raycon earbuds and your headphones from Raycon. Tell you, me more, Chick. You find yourself on an airplane sitting next to Josh Arnold as he complains about his seating arrangements? Boy, this is very uncomfortable, isn't it? Just oh, slap those Raycon earbuds off. in and all of that noise goes away. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Listen to that. <laughs> you know, Raycons has the uh, optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit. That's right. Is what you're saying, jo uh, Chick? Is, am, I, am I Chick or Josh? Uh, they fit every ear ever made. That's right. Those are Raycons. And Raycons also have eight hours of playtime, 32 hours of battery life. But you get amazing audio quality at about half the price of other premium audio brands. It's true. Don't forget awesome features like noise isolation and three customizable sound profiles. And the Bob and Tom Show, we get uh, love letters every single day about how much people love their Raycon Everyday Earbuds. They have tens of thousands of five-star reviews. Isn't it time to buy a pair of Raycon Earbuds for someone you li love and then uh, buy a pair for yourself? Buyraycon.com slash Tom today and get 15% off your Raycon order Plus free shipping. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. You score 15% off in free shipping. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. Look at this boat. What Christy, boat? the ship with all the oh, with cows all the cows, on. yeah. Um, and it's in Cape Town, and I did not realize how the place got its name. Oh. Everybody looks like a superhero. They've all got... <laughs> They've all got capes on. Very elegant. Like they're, they're going out to a formal dance. Cape Top Town. hats and canes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, where, oh, I didn't know that if I go, I'll have to grab a cape. <laughs> uh, coming up, Sexy Time with Allie Breen. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Just got to get a hold of us. Call, fax, mail, or email. Get all the contact information you need at Bob and Tom. Chick said earlier he's never touched a cow before, but the rumors about the girls he's dated are not quite inside. Fine. 
and she's just fine. Oh, yeah. Let's see if we can get something out of there. Okay. He's got, you got the hang of it there? Yeah, I think so. You think so? You better get some help because we don't want you to be an utter failure. It's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. <laughs> That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. You sweat, muscles hurt, and then you got a woman up there telling you you're not doing it right. <laughs> you don't say we didn't warn you. I'm warning you, don't do that. There's laughter ahead. I should be having a better time if this is a part. <laughs>
This is Bob and Tom Radio. It's funny how quickly in four years my wife has learned to read my nonverbal cues. Do you mm -hmm. wife, yeah, sure. If I'm uh, reading a newspaper, my wife can just know that I'm lonely and would much rather have a conversation about her dream kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> Which is why I now understand why married men uh, read the paper in the bathroom. Uh -huh. We know our wives are going to interrupt us, but at least they have to suffer to do it. <laughs> 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 have you ever tried to watch a ball game? Just sit in chair. Something about that triggers something yeah. in my wife that immediately household chores have to be done mm -hmm. right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> immediately. So the yeah. only thing I can do to relax now is I walk around my yard with a hose. Mm -hmm. The water's not even on. I'm just walking around the yard <laughs> like, like a ghost. That's great. Oh, is he working? Okay, then I can be sort of happy if I think he's working. <laughs> Christine Stedman. Now, you're a mom? Well, a mom and a grandma. I think you know that. I know. She's, I'm a grandpa. So this is how this works. Yep. She's been married 27 years and still a virgin to <laughs> Yes. Well, you know, I have a, I have a lot of grandkids. My daughter keeps having babies, has one almost every year. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, she called me the other day. She goes, Mom, guess what? I'm pregnant again. There must be something in the air. I'm like, yeah, you're late. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously. Hello? <laughs> Bang! Hey, hello? <laughs> Sing! I'm getting her fixed. Hi, this is comedian Tim Cavanaugh. And Up. Hey, welcome back to... The Bob and Tom Show. This is the next Golden Bachelor speaking. Yeah. yeah. I like huh? that. How about like that? Be huh? positive. Be positive. You'll be the face of ABC. Oh, yeah. yeah great, Chuck. Do the press tours. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, sweet baby Jesus. That's no good. Can I take my dogs with me? Sure. Of course. Make it part of the deal. Fly private. Oh, that's even better than first class, my friend. Oh, God, what if I like private? Then I'll never go back to first yeah, class. Love Holy hell. Yeah, the, problem, have to go the, the problem is you don't like people. If yeah, that have, is a problem. You, see, if you know have, what? Especially strangers. I don't like <laughs> Yeah, yeah that would be, that, be really rough. On these shows, do they... Um, uh, Hump. Do they have conjugal visits, yep. if you will? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And do they d delve into the uh, details? Uh, not really. They dance around it. Has, well, as, 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 as a bachelor or bachelorette yeah. ever said, it's not an adult cinema. Well, yeah. on the Bachelorette one season, the the, the lady admitted she uh, had in sex with uh, like three guys. Oh, so, but they don't come out and go. You know what? The sex just wasn't good, so I got to go with uh, Kevin. Or... No, they don't really do that. Uh uh So they're not real at all. I, yeah, I've never watched one. If, okay, so let's say you meet the woman of your dreams. Everything about her is perfect, but the sex isn't great. Would you walk away? <laughs> if she were unwilling to take instruction. <laughs> <laughs> All right, class. Now, uh, take out your notebooks. We, uh, this will be on the quiz. I'm Professor Arnold. Now, uh, we, begin, we begin here. Now, you'll notice we have knee pads over in this corner. Uh, and the grass. Yes. I'm going to teach you today how to make it seem like you're giving me a hickey without actually giving me a hickey. Okay. That's, uh, I want okay. the sensation without the after. Oh, yeah. Do that? Oh, What's that? That's can nice. you do that? No, you can't, but oh. I will figure oh, okay, it out. Okay, okay. Now, um, we have a, a, a number. Uh, Pat, you got another song coming up, I know, in just a second here. Okay. Uh, but first, ladies and gentlemen, the palate cleanser. Uh, uh, Who's that yeah. sexy man with a deep voice? Ace Cosby, here he is with his joke of the day. I don't know if you guys heard this, but the inventor of the wind chill factor died this week. Is that right? Oh. Yeah, he was 86. But he felt like he was 64. <laughs> that was Ace Cosby's joke of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Way down the tracks on that one. So uh, I like that very much, Ace. Thank you very much. Ace's joke of the day, sponsored by Sleep Number. Save 50% during the President's Day sale on a limited edition smart bed only at a Sleep Number store or sleepnumber.com. Uh, thank you very much, Christy Lee. Now, uh, I look around the room and I uh, see Pat through the glass. And uh, we had an interesting story yesterday. A chick, you, you had to leave early. You weren't feeling well. No. And Unlike you missed now. this one. Um, it's it's kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, ahead. it's interesting, all right. Uh, police in Texas arrested a man for allegedly committing vile acts in a pair of antique stores. According to the court records, 60-year-old Mr. Mitchell Cooper Vest entered two <laughs> different shops in the Houston suburb of Spring wearing a kilt. He allegedly picked up items off the shelf at the store and inserted them into his rectum and then replaced them back on the shelf for display. Hmm. He was wearing a green kilt, defiled items like a makeup brush, uh. a restoration hardware piece, 
I don't know what that would be. An antique bottle opener. Well, if it's restoration hardware. It was expensive. <laughs> it would be one of those couches. Woo. Quite and a trick. A, <laughs> and a tobacco tent can, which we discovered was like a, like a tobacco snuff can or something. Got it, but it was pretty big. Yeah. In both instances, the merchandise valued at a combined $204 had to be thrown away due to feces on them. Oh, no. He was charged oh, with no. criminal mischief. I didn't mischief. hear that part yesterday, that yes. there was actual oh, visible feces. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> What a what a weird thing to be doing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Sir. And he's uh, he's got a kilt on, so yep. it doesn't the, the, uh, that I guess facilitates the uh, perversion dressed appropriately, oh. you might say. And uh, as, I, as I noted yesterday, it, it, there's kind of a classy thing he's doing it in an antique store. He's not just going to some just you know he didn't like walk into Target. Right. And antiquing. Yeah, he's, yes. he's going for a more sophisticated person who's out there looking for something unusual yeah. for their home. And, uh, <laughs> Unique items. Yeah. Not uh, one of a kind. Produced. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but he's been arrested. Yeah. And he's Rightfully been so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, now, Pat, you have a tribute to this guy? Yeah, let's take an old song here. Since it's an antique store. Shove the antiques up his butt. Do day. Do day. <laughs> Just to kilt the guys and not old do de day. Took a makeup brush and shoved it in. Doody, doody. Uh. Did the same thing with the tobacco tin. Oh, do do de de. Jammed it up there tight. Put it back on display. <laughs> you better clean it up a lot before you sell it on eBay. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that is a really weird. Yeah, fetish. there's a lot going on there. That's a yeah. wild. Uh, again, I'd like to talk to a psychiatrist. What's that all about? What what gets you what get, what imprints that in your brain that you think you got to go around doing that at a shop? <laughs> oh, Boy. the kilt's a nice touch though. Yeah, well, it, it makes well, sense. It's, it's Practical accessible. in this case. Yeah, yeah. but you, you think that? Get to but, it. but do you think that that sends kind of a? I don't know. You see a guy in a kilt, maybe you're going to keep an eye on him. No, um, I think this guy is a one-off. I don't think it's a. I'm not suggesting anybody who, who, who wears a kilt is into this. I'm just. Uh, I'm just saying, uh, if you're wearing a kill, we need to keep an eye on you. Yeah. Maybe. No. I'm like, oh, that's unique. Hmm. Or. Oh, man. Weird. Weird. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, what else you got, Chris? Well, real quick, we have an email. We were talking about uh, the, the scientist, doctor, person working on a fake testicle that may very well eventually become a functioning testicle. Mm -hmm. That's the goal that they have. Well, Ben has written in. He says, my brother was kicked in the nads and unfortunately lost one. They put a fake one back in the bag. Mom asked if he'd be able to have kids. The doctor said he had a 50-50 chance. Well, he ended up having 13 kids with five different women. Wow. Oh, boy. Wow. I love the show and many hours of trying to understand what Tom is trying to relate to us. Oh, well, I have a question. Oh. Which, which woman kicked him in the nuts? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sounds yes. like a brother-on-brother -brother crime, actually. It does, yeah. Oh. Let's... Uh, so be careful when you're kicking somebody. Yeah, but they do. We've had them in the studio. They do. They make them for dogs, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the nudicle is that. Yeah. If you get your dog neutered, if you're, I don't know, nuts, I guess you can. You can have these plastic. If you're not nuts, I think. Yeah, and they're very expensive, right? Because they're oh, really. Yeah, they're whatever well, it is, medical grade silicone or something. I think. But yeah, we had some of them in here. But yeah. couldn't you use them on? Humans as well. I, I think they have a different grade of... Uh, sure. I think the ones for humans are even more expensive. I don't think so. <laughs> I wonder if they match it up if you... I mean, do, do they bring a tray into the OR? I think when, so. When they take the one out, they go, okay, for Gladys, size, which yeah. one matches? And they must. Nurse, yeah. nurse Gladys walks over and... I don't think it's up to the nurse. I think it's probably up to the doctor. I didn't say the Is nurse. it up to the patient, though? I mean, if they walked in and said, well, listen, Chick, um, we're taking out one of your testicles... Uh, I've got the tray here. I mean, are you going to go for the? I wouldn't. I wouldn't have. A, I wouldn't have an insert. I wouldn't. wouldn't? I would be okay. fine. No. I would want the doctor to. I don't want to pick. I mean, yeah. the doctor will know. No. <laughs> you think somebody gets like a way larger one, so it looks like a penny farthing? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Now, Ms. Now, Mr. Arnold, I noticed you've you've chosen the one we call the eight ball. Yeah. Uh, now that is uh, that's going to be quite hefty. But uh, Tom, does one of yours hang a little lower than the other? I think that's standard. Is mm. it? Yeah, yeah. And uh, we've had a number of uh, guests who have talked about uh, dealing with uh, the unpleasantness of testicular cancer. Sure. But, by the way, when caught early, uh, one of the, they do, if, if you want, they'll put a fake one in, but uh, you can, 
like this other guy had the other ones functional. So uh, yeah, if you want to Google uh, testing yourself for that, fellas, it's very yes. important. Yes, well, ladies, it is very ladies, important. Uh, tell your man how to do that. Very important because when caught early, you can uh, come out on the uh, high end of things and be just fine. Yeah. So um, yeah, I the this research you were talking about with the so-called fake testicles. Yes, it's, it's, they're, they're in mice. Yeah, but they're working on eventually being able to, I guess, have do some kind of important research with them. How, yeah. How about this? What. Uh, this is from uh, Steve. I had a testicle removed 15 years ago. Mm. I wanted you guys to know that the scrotum tightens up around the one ball that's left. Oh, okay. Oh. That, uh, good to know. So it do doesn't get all that? hangy. How about that? <laughs> the human body, huh? It's incredible. <laughs> Adaptive. Wow. I am Joe's scrotum. Yeah. <laughs> It just <laughs> tightens right up around the... That's interesting. Yeah. One man left. One man standing. I wonder if he was offered to have one of the fake ones. I'd be curious as to what percentage of guys get that. I bet they offer to everyone, don't you think? Would you... Um, at what point would you explain to someone that that was a, the issue? If you were involved in a romantic relationship. Oh, I see what you're saying. Probably well into the relationship. You think you can tell? You think yeah, I mean, Josh, if you just had the one... Oh, and, I and see. Would you say to the young lady... Uh, I think I would give her before, a heads up. Be before yeah, dessert, before dessert came, by the way, if this goes the way I'm planning tonight, I don't oh, want I, you to... She grabs you down there, and that's real hard on one side. She's going to be like, whoa. But whoa. even if there's just one, not a fake one, I, I would yeah. give her a heads up. I think yeah. saying how this is going tonight Alma, is sexual assault, <laughs> yeah, I, <know. laughs> I think. Whoa, whoa, Chris, do you grab that area? Well, well I'm saying if you were to grab that area... Would you it know, feel like a know. grape and a marble? Right. Would I would want know. well. If I would hopefully get they're something both larger than those. If yeah. I would get something to replace it, it would have to have bells in it, so you could hear me, <laughs> hear me coming from around the block. I had a friend who got a Nothing? fake one. Wait, 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 no, no, no. That is a very fine Thank piece you. of work right there. Very much. You see, he'd have a bell in there, so, so you, you could hear him coming come. around the block. Yeah, because if you're you're right. One would assume that the activity therein. It is very good. I had a friend who his he got a fake one and it squeaked. But his dog wouldn't leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice tag. So, All right. <laughs> very, very good. Uh, when we come back, we'll be uh, dealing with other things in the world besides uh, fake testicles. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, including, um, we have an award show in uh, your old home ground, Josh, of South Korea. Oh. With a mosh pit and something going terribly wrong. Also in the news, the Eagles mm -hmm. uh, and a lawsuit. And then I also want to urge you to uh, vote for Peter Frampton or whoever you like. But I'd certainly vote for Mr. Frampton for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Go to their website and weigh in. Yes. Okay, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Reach us toll free at 1-888-BOB-TOM-1 or at bobandtom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, did you enjoy those videos played in that break? Check out the Bob and Tom YouTube playlist for more great stuff. People were taking the chicken from Chick-fil-A and putting it on Cheddar Bay Biscuits. So, Wait a Josh, Josh, what Josh, 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 Josh is leaving Josh, right now. Josh is leaving. Okay, let's go. day of my life. Tiki Barber here. Remember the days when I was a running back in the NFL? Well, if you're on your feet all day like I was, you get the struggle. The secret is orange insoles. Their insoles are like magic for your feet and body. They'll help you kick hip pain, sore feet, and lower back discomfort to the sidelines. Feel better, do more with orange insoles. 
This, uh, pair this of is the funniest oh, thing I've pair ever scissors, seen. Yeah. I have something new. Oh, you? check it out. That's a hat. I know you like wearing hats, Bob. I love, I love wearing hats. Bob likes Check it. this bitch out. <laughs> this is from the uh, the greatest uh, racing oh, venue that's... in the world, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I didn't know that they made a hat this big. This hat was actually <laughs> actually worn by A.J. Ford. <laughs> All right. I was going to ask you to right? fit in it. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's a little bit, oh, a little bit me, big. Let me have that hat. This, uh, oh, that's that's great. as big as a laundry basket, isn't it? It really uh, is. It's huge. It says one size fits most. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I Very wish nice. I had that hat when I was playing guitar in the street corners. Yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, now fill it up. Yeah, fill her up. The logo of the great Indianapolis Motor Speedway, of course, the that's home hilarious. of the Indy 500 coming up in the month of oh, May. Oh, that's just great. But that is a nice Look big at that. hat. Thank you. Yeah, that's you got to you gotta work the brim there. Yeah. yeah. Right. Can you do you mind trying it on? Oh, I don't mind at all. Let me okay. get uh, let me get the brim right. set first. Right. We need to get a picture of this on our oh, website. Bob. Okay. Bob, Bob is setting the brim, which he's very good uh, at. Yeah. The, well, this is kind of a <laughs> flexible <laughs> brim here. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Put it on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's it's all right. <laughs> hey, what's yeah. happening, Cool Cats? All right. Hey, Coach, I'm ready to go in. <laughs> okay. We'll um. You should wear a shot on. of that <laughs> for the website. The tip of the hat to you, Christy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you could actually wear that over a fireman's helmet. Yeah, you could. <laughs> you should wear that all the time and, and, and say... And just say, what? What, what are you looking at? <laughs> what happened? <laughs>
<laughs> we appreciate you dying for our sins, but we're all trying to slim down. Right <laughs> we want to look good in the painting. Hi, this is comedian Sean Mori, and you're at Window Nation. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. If I sound a little different, it's because <laughs> I've been exposed to a poisonous gas during, during the commercials, and uh, I'm not exactly at my best. There's uh, Christy Lee at the news there desk. You've been sick the last couple of days. Go home if you Good don't feel well. Lord. Well, I, up, I think he doesn't no. feel well. Uh, 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 coming up, it's going to be Allie Breen with you, Sexy Time. You're not allowed to talk yet. There's <laughs> Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hi, Chick. Jessica Alsman joins us. Hi. There's Josh Arnold. Hello. Uh, Ace Cosby's here. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom. Now, um, uh, uh, Pat, you have a couple more songs, I understand, for uh, the rest of the Beatles. Uh, I have uh, one on Josh. We can look, do. Look, look, Pat look. and I are... Uh, he's done <laughs> Pat, He's Pat done enough songs. Josh are fighting. <laughs> yes, what? we're mad at each other. They're, they're mad at each other. There was an incident in the green room. Pardon me for liking you, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Evidently, here's what happened. Pat what tried to talk to me. And I, Pat was talking to Josh, asking him questions. Apparently... Pat asked one too many questions. Yeah, one too many. And Josh responded in a smart aleck way. With? And I said, Pat, I don't know. And that's when Pat said, don't bother. Well, I, then I said, I can find out. Yeah, and Pat said, don't effing bother. <laughs> and stormed out. What was, the, what was he trying to find out? Who, the who bought it. groceries from you know, where? And this is my favorite part of this show because people will come up to you and they go, Don't you, do you guys always all get along? <laughs> no, of course not. What kind of freaks would we be if we wanted to, we got along This the was time. the first uh, little bit uh, of tension that Pat and I have had, though, in, in a very long time, if ever. It yeah. was very yeah. cute, though. Pardon me for liking it. <laughs> Okay. So what was wrong, Pat? You didn't have a Josh kind of didn't want weird, a small talk. Weird, weird food that you like? No. It was, uh, honestly, I, Pat was asking about a, a drink that's in the fridge, and he he essentially wanted to know if he could have one. You know how he gets. How Pat gets. Okay. You know how he gets. All well, right. Jess used and I was, to get these, and now she doesn't anymore because they're too expensive, she says. Pat, I apologize for being a little snippy. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> okay. And I brought them in, but I brought them in because... What are Never they? mind. They're a protein They're drink, Orgain, cold Orgain. Something we all like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Pat, you're welcome to the whole case. That's But okay. they have milk yeah. in them. And too I, little too late. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I'm not even involved in this, but I want you to drink all of them until you drown, <laughs> Pat, if that would be possible. Uh, did you ever wear a kilt, Pat? I know that you're of Irish heritage. But yeah, but the, that's Scottish. We didn't do that. Yeah, no. you didn't know. Okay. Yeah. Oh, just mm, jeans and I mean, went to the bar. Yeah, okay. And blow I mean, stuff it, up, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, don't wear, you don't wear underwear with them, right? Uh, no. Typically, you do not. Josh is a friend who wears them. Yeah. He wears the workman's kilt every day of his life. How old is he? How old is this guy? My age, forty-five. What do you mean the work? What's the workman's kilt? Uh, it's like not like plaid or tartan. Did you say it was khaki? It's like car yeah, Hart? it's like and one was yeah. They're like they kind of look like like Carhartt bibs or and, something that like cream or what brown color. Yes, oh, yes. Wow. Oh, here we go. Yeah. And he workman's he loves guilt. them. Loves them. Says they're the most comfortable things he's ever worn. He won't go back to jeans or shorts. Well, he's. He's, he's, well, he had, I had dinner with him uh, a few months ago, and he, that's what he, he had was a, wearing. He had a kilt on? Oh, look at, at this one. This one has suspenders. It's almost like overalls and a kilt together. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, if he wants to do that, he's he's a girl then. He should wear a skirt. I asked him if he was yeah. a lady now. Yeah. And he said no. He was a man. I'd be concerned at my advanced age <laughs> if I wore a kilt with no underwear. It sounded like I was wearing flip-flops uh, <laughs> as I walked is, down the yeah. street. It looked like the bottom of a bell. Uh, yeah. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> So I'm sorry. We had a news story about a guy stealing stuff, or no, he was doing bad things with with a kilt on. What, what else is happening in the news over there, Christy? Uh, well, they're putting the plop in K-pop apparently at an awards show in South Korea. It descended into chaos after attendees allegedly urinated and defecated in the mosh pit. What do they do? That's not uh, how you mosh. According to Asia One, the incident occurred at the 31st Hanteo Music Awards show in Seoul. Hmm. Videos posted to social media show a crowded area of people pushing and shoving one another to get closer to their favorite K-pop artists. Fighting broke out. One fan actually defecated in the mosh pit. How about that? The K-pop stars <laughs> on stage appeared visibly concerned with the crowds. I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. This makes that Will Smith thing seem pretty minor. <laughs> he, he didn't drop trow at the uh. Oscars. Just a quick slap in the face. Yikes. Hmm. Yeah. That's disgusting. Yeah, that's awful. A mosh pit? Ruin the mosh pit. And you're a, you're a mosh pit fan, right? 
Uh, there was a time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not, not. I, I realize now that I, I can't do it anymore. Why do people throw their shoes in a mosh pit? People just start throwing shoes everywhere, and they, they go do on barefoot. And you'd be surprised at how many actually get them back. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that like, does surprise me. Yeah. Well, they just uh, wait till everybody leaves, and then they go back and. No, like within minutes, sometimes really? they'll go. They'll be able to find their shoe. Someone huh. throws it back in his direction or her direction. It's like, thank you. I don't like the shoe throwing. I think it's, it's better just to slam into each other's bodies. And okay. Yeah. So there are rules in a mosh pit. Uh, there are, uh, yeah, unwritten rules. Sure. One of them, I presumably, is don't poop in the mosh pit. Don't That's you? definitely a rule. Well, you know, Man. he probably just scared the out of him. Maybe her, whichever. Oh. Otherwise, how do you squat and keep your? They're not. They're not stance. doing that. <laughs> oh, boy. Well. I'm hey, sure. the Eagles are in the news today. They're embroiled in a criminal trial involving the handwritten lyrics to Hotel California. Finally, I hope they're all arrested. <laughs> what? Three oh, men. Oh, Don Henley, an amazing statesman, a uh, uh, fine human being. Three men are charged with conspiring to sell the band's manuscripts without the right to do so. At issue are over 80 pages of draft lyrics from the 1976 hit album Hotel California. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Including words to the title cut as well as Life in the Fast Lane and New Kid in Town. Lawyers for the three men say they did not commit a crime with the papers, which they acquired via a writer who had worked with the Eagles. Don Henley is expected to testify between Eagle tour stops. No one is charged with theft, but prosecutors will still have to establish that the documents were stolen. Mm. Okay. Well, these guys are trying to make a killing. Make money. Them. Yeah, they're trying to make money on the manuscripts, yes. But if it's Don Henley's handwriting, wouldn't it be fairly obvious that they're his? Yeah, but what if he threw them away? What if, make... Or what if he gave them to this other writer? Or what if they, I don't know. Well, they'll ask him, and he'll say he didn't. I've got to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is Case where closed. you would tell me if I were acting like you were. <laughs> this is a long show. <laughs> I'm just saying, Don, if they're Don, I think Don wrote them, give them back to the guy. I think Felder's at the bottom of this somehow. You wait and yeah. see. <laughs> you wait and see. That would be, that would be hilarious. <laughs> Whatever, Don, I'm going to beat your ass. Yeah. Glenn Fry, 2009. <laughs> yeah, watch the Eagles documentary, please. Uh, speaking of rock and roll, once again, uh, the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, those nominations are out there. And uh, interesting thing, uh, uh, Foreigner is one of the bands that's up. Don't the worry about anybody else but Peter Frampton. Peter Frampton, yeah. please. Peter Frampton. And um, we did have a funny story earlier about Foreigner. I guess um, was yeah, it Mark Ronson's uh, is the stepson of... Uh, Mick Jones, yes. Mick Jones. Did you know him, Pat? Oh, yeah. You know Mick, right? Yep. Do you know Mark? Yes. Okay. Was a kid. What about Mike? Know anybody named Mike? No, I know a Mike. <laughs> Mark Ronson is a great songwriter. In any event, he's a producer. Was, Jones is the father of my girlfriend's sister's a fiance. So this is confusing. I know. Um, wow. Are they in Kentucky? What's going on? Um, <laughs> we have um, uh, Jack Black was one of the people weighing in about why you should vote for Foreigner. Here he is. Feels like the first time when oh no no like you opened up the door. Hey Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, open the door. Foreigners waiting outside. Let him in. He's Why Jack don't we do Black. a song for Peter Frampton? You, well, Pat I, sings better than that. Let Pat do it. Okay. Show yeah, Pat, yeah, Pat, show us the way. The way. Show Very people good. the way. Very good. I love Peter Frampton. Yeah. Now, uh, we had an interesting... Uh, we were talking yesterday about the, this uh, television commercial shown during The Big Game. Uh, <laughs> I have seen it since. With uh, Ken Jong, friend of the show, a comedian, um, actor, the guy who famously got out of the trunk of a car. and uh, Doctor. Yeah, he's also... Yeah, he is, in fact, a physician, hangover. actually. Hangover. Uh, and the hangover, yeah, he was the guy that got out of the trunk naked. His idea, by the way. International uh, crime boss. And um, he, he's doing the thing for Popeyes where he's put to sleep because Popeyes is, they've awakened and they've surprised him with delicious chicken wings. <laughs> Tell me more chip. <laughs> That's right, Tom. <laughs> After 52 long years, it finally happened. Uh, a couple Sundays ago, Popeyes fans everywhere experienced the perfect pairing of Popeyes commercial during that big game about their new lineup of chicken wings. Man, they are so, mm. so, uh, well, eclectic, really, in the lineup that came out. Five crispy, juicy flavors. Here they are. Sweet and spicy ghost pepper, 
For those on the brave side, signature hot honey barbecue and roasted garlic parmesan. You know, check football's over, but that doesn't mean you can't enjoy Popeye's wings watching other things. That's exactly right. You got basketball games coming up. March Madness is right around the corner. I know how to read a calendar. March is next month. Gay uh, tennis, baseball, pickleball, wall ball, high lie, your cousin's cornhole tournament. Uh, they're all just begging, bring us chicken wings from Popeye's. Yes, and you you can bring them. Uh, when you get them for yourself, I say get some for your neighbors as well. That's why, right. Why the heck not? Why not? They and deserve it. They live next to you. The point is, people love wings, and now, of course, they're going to love Popeye's <laughs> chicken wings. So order some Popeye's wings today for your upcoming whatever it is. Well, thank you very much, fellas. Uh, coming up, uh, we've got Allie Breen on standby. She is our uh, expert on romance, and we're going to try to help some people in love with a show we call Sexy Time. Are we? This is the Bob and Tom Show. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Screen Door Productions presents A Day at Fergler's Hardware, Part 2. It turns and sways. Okay. Well, thanks for the call. Uh, have a great day today. We're going to move And I got forward. one more thing. May I say one more thing? I, I've I been guess. waiting 20-some years for this. Is, uh, <laughs> is everybody listening? Yeah, yeah we're yeah. listening. Uh -huh. Okay. Chick, go back 20-some years, 1998, Fort Wayne, Indiana, all weekend <laughs> with me. <laughs> what? There we go. Yes. No. Finally. Finally. I have. Okay. Whatever you say. Okay. Remember and listen to this. You ordered. You or you went by your la your real name oh, when God. you checked oh, in, and geez. you invited me for the weekend. Now wait. Oh God. I'm gonna get shot for this. And you ordered grapes and Miller Light beer. 
Yeah, that sounds like me, all right. <laughs> that's right. Yep, that's oh, me. Okay, about, yeah. hey, Deborah, we got to go here. <laughs> Christy, give me the teaser. <laughs> that couldn't have gone better. <laughs> yeah. Somehow I blame you. Ah, <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, where do we go from here? I don't give a crap about the homeless because they don't live in my neighborhood, now do they? It's a gated community, I think not. Uh, That's not the blues. So what I did... Yes. Eyebrow dandruff. That's yeah. disgusting. <laughs> Is that a thing? I'm not proud of it. There was, why would you, why would you bring that up on the air? That's I didn't. <laughs> It was, Christy did, it was said in oh, confidence off sorry. the air. Yeah. Don't ever say eyebrow dandruff in front of a potential lover. Oh. oh. oh okay. Hey, look, ladies, if I'm on top, you might get sprinkled on. <laughs> well, let it snow. Well, you're on top. Well. <laughs> I'll just let everybody else finish that. Oh, I see. Oh. If you're on top, you got about eight, eight <laughs> seconds to live. Is that it? I wouldn't say eight. If you're on top, Godspeed to your ribs, ladies. <laughs> Is that what we're getting at? <laughs> Good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom Radio. Bob and Tom Show. Everybody's here. Christy and Josh. And Yay! Pat Yay. Godwin. Jess Galsman joins us. There's Ace. Hey. I'm Chick. Nice to be among friends. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. Friends, huh? Well. Oh. Okay, thank I, you. I find that Still surprising. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, just a little pleasantry uh, for everybody. Oh, Nobody small talk. You know, normally we get, um, the, I'd rather be here than with the finest people in the world. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Now we're with the very fine Allie Breen has joined us. Uh, Allie Breen is Hi, a stand-up comedian. Hi, and she is the hostess. Hi, friend. Of, uh, of Sexy Time, the show where we try to help you with your romantic problems. Allie, what have you got? Dear Allie, my husband is an only child and very close to his mom. For Valentine's Day, he got me a beautiful necklace, and I just found out he got the exact same thing for her. I got mad at him, and he doesn't understand why, and I said it takes all the romance out of it. I don't think he so. He says the sentiment is obviously different for each of us, but he just knew we'd both love it. How do I get him to understand he's being super creepy? Oh, I don't that, think it's that, creepy. I don't think that's creepy. I don't really think it's creepy. Uh, Rhea, I'm surprised I to hear do. you guys. Uh, I don't know. I love guys that love their mom. Well, sure. Yeah, like, I, I think it's kind of sweet. It is very sweet. Unless they're mama boys that like, Mommy, I need you to do this for me. But I would have thought this was a bad thing to get your mother and your lover the same gift. Oh, it depends. I'm with Josh I mean, if, on this one. Well, really? Yeah. I mean, if it were yeah, something, if, like... if it were something of a of a sexual nature, like if it was a, <laughs> all right, you know, like hey, I, I bought you both the Love Wand Seven Thousand <laughs> Diesel <laughs> Edition, but no, it's a it's a, hmm. a heart shaped <laughs> necklace, right? Isn't that what you said? It's a necklace. It didn't say heart shaped, oh, but yeah, I would assume. Um, but... Here's the thing. He's a guy. Uh, most guys don't yeah. think about this kind of thing. Being he, he got you something he thought he was... Don't be upset that he doesn't understand. But I do kind of agree with you that he should have gone with something a little different. I mean... I <laughs> Even a different color than silver and gold. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's a fair point. But yeah, he's just a guy and he's like, what? Yeah, he doesn't get it. And hey. don't be mad at him for that. He, he's, he's like one stop shopping. This is perfect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but he sounds like a guy is something really nice. It does. So that's the thing. Just trying to be, be one thing. By the way, the butt plug, the blue one I got for mom. <laughs> <laughs> the blue, yeah, that's her favorite color. <laughs> but then he'd be changing it up at least. There'd be a different color. Yeah, yeah. He'd be okay. Oh, yeah, no. I, this is the kind of dumb thing I would have done. Exactly. Yeah. Give the guy. I, I wouldn't have thinking, thought twice right. about it. Give the guy a break. 
Okay. But that's what the girl will get mad about, the sentiment. Like, how did you not have romantic feelings for me when you bought this necklace? He did. And then you thought, like, that's exactly... It's like when a guy buys, like, a vacuum cleaner for his wife. Because he's, he's like, but you need it. You'd love it. And mm-hmm. she's like, but I wanted romance. I think right. that's what's going on here. Yeah, the vacuum cleaner, mm, the there, va- better, there yeah. better be a necklace hanging from the vacuum cleaner. Yeah. Than, yeah. Never buy an appliance. <laughs> yeah, that's never a thing. Yeah, but, but I, has an electric this guy cord. didn't... Yeah, but it sounds like a nice guy. Yeah. He's a good guy. Likes his mom. Yeah. I like the guy even more. Yeah, cut him a little slack. <laughs> it's okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. He'll know next time. Yes, yes. exactly. Oh, yeah. He's learned his lesson, oh, yeah, trust me. What'd you get yeah. him? That's what I want to know. Oh, yeah. Ooh. That's a good point. I mean, girls aren't obligated to get the guy anything for Valentine's Oh, really? Day. What? I what? think, yeah. Oh, this is America. No, 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 no. <laughs> I bought my <laughs> husband a Valentine gift, of course. You Did, know. No, oh. no, let me ask you this. Was it something practical? Yes, See, because it goes, it goes different than yeah. For the guys guy. like practical, so it's yeah. okay. You give him like a Black and Decker drill. It wasn't oh, a hell drill, yeah. but yeah, yeah, but he would have like liked it. I think. Okay. It was a small gift, but he liked it. Yeah, it's hard to get a guy something non-practical. You can't get them jewelry, really, or you know, makeup. Right. It's right. tough. I had a girl give me flowers one time. Did you like it? Oh. I hated it. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really? Uh, it was nice, but what I was a stupid gift is this. I would have <laughs> rather, <laughs> rather had like a magnetic screwdriver. Or yeah. I, I had a girlfriend, money. and I lived with her. She gave me a toaster oven for Christmas. But yeah, but that's that sounds like ace to me. That sounds, that sounds like great. ace. My, yeah. my really? boyfriend an air fryer for Christmas. I thought I was doing a great job, and he was like an air fryer. <laughs> this is like a few years ago. What's wrong with that? I didn't. I thought ace. This fine. isn't a. This is not a criticism, but we know your diet. I would have thought you go through two or three air. <laughs> Toaster ovens a year. Yeah. Isn't it mostly pizza rolls? <laughs> I she nailed it, actually. Yeah. That yeah. Yeah. You know, gift giving is difficult at all, like, all the time. Difficult. And I think that this woman. Did getting... you get a gift on Valentine's Day? <laughs> he doesn't. Uh, really. Maybe even from your girls? Uh, but I certainly did. Oh, how nice. Yeah. yeah. All right. Some handmade Valentine's. Yeah, well, that's, that's like, the, did your, uh, especially from the girls. That, you know, that's what you want yeah. more than anything. Yeah. Like yeah. your children get you drawing. some edible underwear or something? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, could you go have diarrhea somewhere else, please? <laughs> I don't have <laughs> diarrhea. Well, Evidently, uh, you have <laughs> diarrhea. <laughs> uh, this is just, uh, I, could we move on? What's our next letter, Allie? Yeah. Dear Allie, I drunkenly hooked up with my friend's boyfriend. Yeah, you did. Recently. <laughs> yeah, you he did. told her about it. <laughs> because he felt guilty, and he said to her that we did hook up, but we did not have sex. That is true, but it's only because he couldn't stand at attention, so to speak. Oh. And believe me, he kept trying. He's making it seem like I would have been game, but his morals stopped him. And now my friend won't talk to me, and I think I should tell her the truth. What do you guys think? Uh, I think you already botched it because he told her first, right? Yeah. Like, the boyfriend... Admitted the truth. So now what? Like, you're just... Ugh. I wonder why she's not Yeah, this detail's boyfriend. not going to be that important. On right. top no, it really isn't. Else, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, why isn't she mad at the boyfriend? It's not her fault. Yeah, how's he Takes being... A... <laughs> yeah, how... Wait a minute. Right. How's Mr. Clean getting out of this? That's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Well... I, look at it this way. This is how I would look at it. You are now free from those people. You know, like I, two less friends. Yeah, you, great. You, you don't have to get them a toaster oven for Christmas. Yeah, you're, you're on. You're on your own. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Plus side, always a silver lining. Yeah, I guess though that that is an indication that the guy wasn't being honest with her. Maybe he was saying, "Oh, your friend came on to me so right. hard. I couldn't even. I did a little bit, but then I stopped her." Yes, exactly. That's why she's and she's you believing her boyfriend. That girl's yeah. gonna get hers in the end because he'll do something else. Well, and, and also you don't deserve to be the friend. I mean, you cheated. Right. <laughs> this is right. the consequence. You did you, cheat. Yeah. No one's a good guy here. No, so just, yeah. In a game of losers, there are no winners. That's right. Thank you, chick. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Hope this guy can get that it should together. Should be on a t-shirt with well, somebody. I'm sure, yeah. It sounds like yeah. a team may have been hammered. They should yeah. go to a, be a monk or be a nun. Leave okay, us okay. Good. Right, well, let's go to our next letter. Allie Breed, it's sexy time. You can reach Allie. She spells her name A-L-L-I-B-R-E-E-N. And on uh, your favorite social media platform, you can weigh in with your love troubles. What have you got, Allie? Dear Allie, I have two fake Instagram accounts that I use to stalk people I'm dating. Out of boy. Innocently, usually. Or is it a girl? Is it a girl or a boy? It's a, it's a girl. Gotta be a girl. The guy I'm dating now just got pretty serious with me. He asked if we could, you know, be boyfriend, girlfriend. And so a few weeks later, I used one of these accounts to DM him and see if he'd bite. 
Well, he did, and he's being very flirty, and I'm devastated that he fell for it. It's too hard for me not to say anything, but I also want to see how far he'll go with this. The problem is, even if he stops responding to her now, I'm already mad. What should I do? Just quit seeing the guy. Yeah. You're a weird you should, dude. Yeah. You should commit yourself. Oh, you've, yes. been, uh, you've been looking for a way out. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. There's the it. door. How Wait a second, that? Josh. I want to hear your take on this. Uh, commit yourself. Take yourself to the nearest <laughs> mental hospital and stay there for a oh, while. Oh, I think she should just commit to the role. Meet up no. as the big girl, and he sees you. He knows it's over, so that's your way of saying, "Let's have some breakup sex, and oh let's just call God. it." Too that's much work. Great Ma'am, advice. Live a healthier life, please. This is not yeah. good behavior. No, that is a great gotcha, though. If she actually plans a date using her fake account, and then she herself shows yeah. up, yes, that's a good heart. That attack. is the uh, that's like the that. point. A great gotcha. You're right. <laughs> well, it's a you win. It's so you can break yeah. up in person. Uh, there if, you go. if a person does this to you, if they say, if you're going on a date right. and it ends up being this other person, mm -hmm. you are allowed to stab them in the hand with your fork. <laughs> that okay. should be the law. I don't think it you're is. You're both the wrong. Law. <laughs> so that's the best part. Yeah. Man. Have fun with it. You Love. lunatic. Okay. Yeah. Next. <laughs> Dear Allie, my wife and I are in therapy to try to get the spice back in our sex life. I love the idea of this, but I think that we're just too familiar with each other to recreate any big kind of excitement. I'm actually fine with boring sex, and it's weird we're trying to insert a stranger and now lingerie and toys into this. I'm really ready to just allow her to cheat if she needs to. Oh, I don't want to make our sex life work, but I don't want to make her feel bad. What should I do? Well, at least you got a good attitude. Yeah. 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 Sounds like you're uh, signed, signed the games on tonight. I can't be there. <laughs> Man, this is kind of a different scenario. You don't hear this very often. The guy's yeah. going, yeah, I'm just going to let her cheat. I don't want to put any effort in it. Right. What? Yeah. <laughs> Just doesn't want. Still, Maybe just tell her that then. Yeah. See what happens. Yeah. I, but you know. that would hurt her feelings, I think. Well, unless but she's a stupid loudmouth. <laughs> but that <laughs> goes without saying. Yeah. I still say if you can delegate like the feelings in your relationship, if you can say like, oh, we're having trouble with communication, you can go talk to a therapist. If you're having sex problems, you can delegate the sex. You can be like, all right, I guess we'll hang out, and watch the game, and then you'll go cheat afterwards. <laughs> And come back home. So I, there like, probably are couples who live a very work. happy yeah. life like that. But they don't um, consider it cheating. They consider it just part of their open. The yeah. real advice here: keep talk, keep going, keep talking to your therapist and her, and tell your therapist all of this, even if you have to do it alone. I can fix this in one word. Oh, oh boy, let's hear it. Zorro, Zorro. <laughs> you dress up as Zorro, <laughs> cape. What? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Let's, hear him, a, let's hear him out. <laughs> what a cape, great idea. Okay. Cape, hat, sword, nothing else. You walk into that bedroom, that'll spice yeah. up your sex. And when oh you my. finish, you have to do it in a Z. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or it'll be opposite. She'll never want to go to therapy again. She'll be like, this is not working. Right. We're never going to do anything Zorro like that. Like yeah, you may. I, I believe there is a new Zorro show out, so maybe it's oh, somewhat top of mind. Okay. <laughs> Just an unusual costume. He's got the mask. He's yeah. got the hat. He's got the, the sword. Mm -hmm. You know, and the cape, of course. The cape's what really helps. <laughs> use it to clean Maybe up afterward. Oh. The movie gets way too into these scenarios, and then she's like, wait, okay, I'm okay with vanilla sex. This is too much for me. Yeah, go above and beyond, then she'll back down. Good call. <sighs> yeah. She, the Zorro thing might work in the opposite way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, so far, I think we're 0 for 4. What else have we got? Dear Allie, I just had a big breakup, and one of the couples me and my ex-boyfriend would double date with are in a secret open relationship meaning they're allowed to do stuff outside of their marriage, just trying to not let the others find out. I've had no luck meeting someone online, so all I keep thinking about is this guy. Is it crazy for me to pursue this? I think a big part of it is just getting back at my ex or getting info on my ex, but it's truly the only thing that excites me right now. Should I do it? Oh, that's tough because I, normally I would say, yeah, why not? But the fact that you really... It, it is kind of a covert way to get back at or learn about your ex. I'm all confused. I'm lost. I think I so uh, a, a couple broke up. Right. Okay. Their friends have an open relationship. Right. Uh, even though they try not to talk about it with each other is what I'm hearing. So, yeah. So they'll, they can go out and do their thing, but they, but they don't, don't come back and go, hey, I was with. Mm -hmm. So okay. she wants to get with the guy in this open relationship. Okay. But for all the wrong reasons. But it does sound like yes. some of it is for the wrong reasons. And Oh, so yeah. pillow talk, she could talk about her ex or something. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ooh. Move on. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the best idea. Plenty of other people out there. Yeah. 
If she's obsessed with it, though, I think she's going to do it. If that's all that's on her yep. mind, you yeah, know? probably. Yeah, but mine's made up. Then what if her ex-husband could... or ex-boyfriend finds out she's slept with his best friend? Yeah, or one of his you friends. know what though? That's that he... Dems to breaks when it yeah. comes to <laughs> breaking up. He'll probably hook up with the other woman, that so then be. it ends up being a big four-way at some well, point. I don't know. If there's a which, problem. Which which one's dressed as Zorro? <laughs> I lost my place. Well, let's. We have time for another letter. What do you got, Allie? Dear Allie, please settle a debate for me. If you know someone is flirting with you, but you have a boyfriend, do you need to tell them right away, or can you wait until they ask you out or make a pass? My boyfriend says I'm way too flirty, and I never tell people that I have a boyfriend until I absolutely have to. But I feel like it would be really presumptuous to just start a conversation by being like, sorry, I have a boyfriend. Who's right here? Whoa. <laughs> Wait a minute. I think we're all going to have different answers. Um, <laughs> what is she doing that... She needs that constant reassurance. Is that what I'm hearing? That she has to flirt with all these other people? Yeah, I guess that's what it sounds like. He thinks she's flirting with everyone. And I think she thinks she's just talking to them. Uh -huh. I don't know. She probably knows she's flirting, but she doesn't think that she needs to stop until they make mm. a pass. I don't I don't think you're being totally honest with us, ma'am. I think you like flirting. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. But you're not going to cheat. I think you're loyal, but you still like flirting. Uh, so... Mm. You need that ego boost. Yeah. You've got to flirt a little bit harder than just talking to someone for them to make a pass, right? Like there's touching, like a... Uh, 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 well, you that's... Know. The, it, I see, I, know. I'm a problem because I'm i I'm this person. I, 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 I'm not a cheater, but I like flirting. So, I don't know. So, hmm. um, as you're handing her her brassiere back... She says, by the way, I have a boyfriend. <laughs> so you think it's gone That's a little... fairly far. <laughs> before she lets him know. Hey, That's... before you break out the Zorro hat. <laughs> That's not flirting. That's. I think that's uh, intercourse. Wait, is what you got there? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, wait. I, do you feel bad though, Josh, if you flirt to the point where she asks you out, and then you have to be like, "Oh, I have a boyfriend," because then I mean, I have a girlfriend. Whatever you have. I don't know. You guys have all heard my flirting. It's it's, it's when, very when I talk to Christy, and yeah. it's you know what I mean. It's all you know. bad. It's not. I don't think it ever gets to a point where they want to ask me out. <laughs> gotcha. It's like lighthearted. Yeah, yeah. When they say, by the way, Josh, here's your underwear back. Uh, that, was, <laughs> yeah, that, that, was, that was a little too much. I, I just wanted to get a coffee. I... <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. We got one time for one more, Allie. Dear Allie, I've been seriously dating a girl for eight months. She wants me to go home with her for a few days in March to meet the family, and I really love her, but I absolutely do not want to. I mean, if they're out here sometime, that's fine, but I don't want to travel and stay in her childhood room oh, ever. How do I communicate this without making her mad? Ever. I, you know what? Ever. I don't know, but if you figure it out, please tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Write yeah. a book letting everyone know how to yeah, do that. Yeah, this is the classic scenario. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Man, you never want to go back there? Like... That drastic? Yeah. Or can you go that stay at a drastic. hotel instead of staying with the family? Would that be an, like a That'd compromise? Be a, that would That's be a, a good compromise. one good thing. That might that. be your first reasonable answer. You're right still going to have to look at it. <laughs> Working on it. And here are the pictures over in the sixth grade. Oh. Uh, yeah. I would have thought guys want to stay in like their girlfriend's old room. No. No, I can't imagine that I mean, would be. I think it's a turn on for some guys probably. Probably. Isn't it? Like it's always in those, you know, cheesy movies where the they sneak out of the room. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the the ladies at the guy's house, and he's got the Star Wars sheets, and mm. yeah, uh, no, keep going. The, that was the nice. The Farrah Fawcett poster on the wall, et cetera. Et cetera. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, thanks, Allie. Allie. Are you working this weekend? Yeah, I'll be back down in Florida, back at the Villages All on right. Saturday night, and I'll go down there for the whole weekend. Yeah. What cool. kind of uh, air miles do you have? Do you have? Uh, I have a lot of air miles. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I have a lot because I yeah. Exactly. They're they're useful, uh, but I keep accumulating them. They're hard to use. Like, I always feel bad using them, so I keep getting more and more of them. Hopefully, they'll never expire. Cool. Okay, well, it's always a great pleasure. Allie Breen, A-L-L-I-B-R-E-E-N, as I said earlier, and you can uh, weigh in with your love troubles. We'll see how we do. I think we were mi mildly helpful on maybe two of the letters. <laughs> exactly. I think so. Uh, All right. The other way, it was fun. Good friends talking about... Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. So long, Allie. Thanks, guys. Bye, Allie. Bye, Allie. Uh, I got a letter here. Oh. Dear Bob and Tom show, um, I spent two glorious days in my sleep number bed recently recovering from an illness. I went from a Chick McGee 100 down to a Christy Lee 35, then back up to a Josh 65. Oh. I had a great two days. 
I'd never been so sad getting better. <laughs> uh, I'm not sick anymore, but my sleep number made it kind of like a vacation. Oh. Thank you for talking about the sleep number bed on the Bob and Tom Show. Dave in Lexington, Kentucky. <sighs> Thank you very much, Dave. I am glad you're better, Dave. That's awesome. And the sleep number bed uh, is in of interest, especially now because Christy Lee has a new one. Uh, king size. And it's king size because you got married. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, on it, once again, the, the key to the sleep number bed, of course, is adjustable firmness. Either side of the bed has its own setting, and it's adjustable at any time. Your setting is currently on? 35. Meaning what? That I like a softer mattress. Andrew, your he husband. He likes a 100, the firm side of the bed. And the Sleep Number Smart Bed is mm -hmm. happy to accommodate you. Now, uh, I will remind you that it is President's Day week, and yes. Sleep Number is continuing their President's Day sale. Significant because it's 50% off the Sleep Number Limited Edition Smart Bed with special financing available for a limited time. So, I recommend uh, J.D. Power & Associates as someone who can tell you what to do. J.D. Power ranked Sleep Number's Smart Bed number one in customer satisfaction with mattresses purchased in-store. Want to read about it? Visit jdpower.com slash awards. It's the adjustable bed so everybody's happy. You'll find it exclusively at Sleep Number stores. You'll find the store by going to sleepnumber.com slash BT show. See the store for all the details. You will love your sleep number bed just like Christy. Josh, your sleep number once again is 65. So he had it right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mine is a crisp 85. Mr. McGee, of course, is a 100. That's the Sleep Number <laughs> Smart Bed, sleepnumber.com slash BT Show. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Add to or continue the conversation. Check out the Bob and Tom Show on Facebook. Get the link at bobandtom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. People, here's what people don't understand sure, about Bob and Tom show. I get to be the official greeter of our guests. Great. And I believe right. we do have a guest waiting in the green room. Sure. And I would Hi. like to greet Hi. officially Hi, our guest. Let's Jim, Jim Gaffigan. Gaffigan. Hi, how Hi, are Jim you, Gaffigan. Christy Lee? How are you? I'm good. It's so it nice is to great see to be here. not set up or anything. Do you know oh, are you on a, uh, you got your own reality show? I do. It's called Nobody Really Cares What Christy Lee Does Behind the Scenes, but we're going to show it to <laughs> him anyway. Thank you, Jim. It's so good to see you. Okay, let's move. Let's show people what you eat back here, Christy. Oh, well, my favorite thing is right over here. This is called uh -huh. chocolate covered raisins, or I call Nirvana. Sure, have a have a. And you know what's great is um, the way that's set up. It's yeah. like there's tons of hands going in there. Yes. And so hands are usually covered with feces. So. Yeah. <laughs> He's absolutely right. So now you're going to ruin my favorite Enjoy. snack in the green room. The treat. What what there used to be soup here in the morning. What happened to the soup? There used to be different things. He retired. Or does it come at like nine or he something? He retired. So now we have to eat things that look like feces. So that's mm. it. Or is it kind of... Uh, we were talking about uh, racial stereotyping. Because uh, you're, you're a golfer.
Yes. And I know that um, uh, we were talking about golf off the air, but uh, a lot of stereotypes in, in, the, in the world, certainly one of them about Asians in sports. And I think that's uh, really now uh, really being changed, particularly in the world of uh, baseball, baseball oh, right. basketball. Mm-hmm. It's hu- huge changes. It's Maybe great. 15, 20 years ago, you didn't really see that as much. It's great. I love seeing Asians in sports. And, and yeah, as you said, Major League Baseball, the real sports. You mm-hmm. know, we're not talking ping pong or <laughs> pie gal poker or <laughs> base juggling with your feet or really hard Sudoku problems yeah. or competitive hot dog eating uh-huh. or breaking ice blocks with your forehead or <laughs> dancing back up for Gwen Stefani, the, yeah. the real sports. <laughs> <laughs> That's great because before, if I wanted to cheer for Asians in sports, the people I had was uh, Michelle Kwan and half a Tiger Woods. That's <laughs> yeah, that, that was it. it. That was That's, it. That's it. Wow. And, and you know, like Tiger, let's <laughs> let's talk about him. You know, I don't know which half of Tiger made him want to cheat, but uh, I think we can all agree which half drove into the tree. So <laughs> now, let me get this straight. Nicoterm is a <laughs> guaranteed to help you quit smoking. I think it's a bad. <laughs> this is Bob and Tom 24-7. Comedy, guess, Bob and Tom exclusives. And it's here on the internet. Bob and Tom 24-7. There's a lady in town she's an orthodox jew and she needs to buy bread that is unleavened but it's late and she knows that the stores are all closed and she really needs to make a sandwich She's buying bread at seven he lives. And the bread is wonder. That's my idea. My mom doesn't like it when I drink. She's she's always like, Michael, I hate it when you drink. You always Aww. become somebody else. I'm like, Mom, that's why I do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we laugh. Yeah. Yeah. We, we laugh now. Uh-huh. Um, <clears throat> what's your drink of choice? My drink of choice? Uh, I like uh, I like Guinness. I like Guinness. Really? I don't know if that's a... That's all right. That's good. Awesome. Christy, you're nodding. You, you like approve? Guinness. Yeah, I was, I was yeah. expecting something sweet. Oh, uh. <laughs> Bob. Well, I mean, you know, it doesn't seem like a beer drinker. Yeah. It looks more like a Mai Tai drinker to me. My, my mom, my mom's Irish, so I always feel like... Ah, she's, okay. I, like, growing up, it was weird because she's, like, she's Irish Catholic, so she's, like, super Catholic, you mm-hmm. know? And when, <laughs> whenever we did something wrong, she'd, like, go off. She'd be like, she'd be like, who broke the fishbowl? Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, my, brother be, my brother'd be like, wow, we should go tell her it was us. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, no, we're not even one of the top top three suspects <laughs> we're not even in the lineup we are from, we're a catholic oh, jesus wow. died for our sins <laughs> he won't mind taking the heat on a fishbowl yeah. uh tom simmons is our guest you were i understand you have been to afghanistan i assume on, on one of the uh, uso type tours the, uh, the comics on duty okay mm-hmm. uh, good yeah. for you afghanistan is desolate man everything is dirt every building every structure is like dirt we don't need satellite guided bombs. We just should drop water balloons. <laughs> that, that, that muddy. Wow. Turn that place into mud and farmland, and it'll be great. Right. Have you run this strategic idea by the people at the Pentagon? Yeah, yeah it'd save us a lot of money. Amen. This is positively we're launching brilliant. a massive uh, hydro attack. Uh, that's what we're gonna do. And, uh, all these fire bombs are merely drawing it out. How are you listening to? Bob? Got some tickets for you. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. You made it, Trickster. I think so, right? Mm-hmm. Sick as a dog over there. <laughs> <laughs> Not doing too bad. <laughs> Today in history, what number you got over there, Tom? I'll see if it corresponds with the number I'm looking at. 21 Feb. Let me look. Feb 2-1. You're right. <laughs> uh, this is interesting, and I, I I think we talked about this, so I, I think I'll have to All right. direct this question at Ms. Alsman. Um, in 1931, Alka-Seltzer was introduced. <laughs> How much? Alka-Seltzer, 1931. 31. 31. Wow. Um, you know, aspirin has not changed since it was introduced in like 19... And I have never tried Al- Alka-Seltzer. Really? But there was a famous commercial with the jingle, plop, plop, fizz, fizz, oh, what a relief it is. 
Is there a question here somewhere? Yeah. Why did they do that? Because uh, when you plop it in, it fizzes. Nope. When you plop it in, it fizzes, but it... They wanted to say plop, plop, fizz, fizz, because they wanted you to use two at a time. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. You are correct, sir. Yeah. It's a good product. I, like I used it. to work for uh, an advertising agency, J. Walter Thompson. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. New York City. Have you used all those jingles? Right you used Alka Seltzer? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what is it? Sure. Is it aspirin? Is that what it is? No, no it's like no, indigestion. No, no yeah, and Alka Seltzer uh, cold. Uh, that's plus, whatever. That's what I really. That's use. some that, good stuff. It is. Yeah. The Alka Seltzer cold and flu yep. helps. It's pretty good. I just remember as a kid seeing all those commercials that I never, for whatever reason, have. Speedy Alka Seltzer gave me the creeps. Remember that little oh, yeah, the little yeah. puppet with the uh, little bastard. Oh, weird hat. Good God, yeah. No, yeah. No, that, a you like my hat? Yeah. We don't. We a don't. smile like a goblin? Yeah. You like my grin? No. It is, it's a that? famous story in advertising, though, that by doing that, they increase their sales because people thought, oh, when you use this, you're supposed to take two. Like shampoo? Was yeah. it rinse yeah, and like, repeat? Yeah, rinse and repeat. Yeah. Who's the genius that thought of that? <laughs> That was a smart move. And I repeated for years. I know. Remember that joke? I Pete believed and repeat? him. Oh, Pete and repeat, go get a whore or something. What is that? <laughs> well, and then Pete and repeat, repeat okay. said, no. Pete, repeat. And they got another whore. And then they said, Pete, and repeat. And got another whore. This little chick will like this one. Okay. Sorry. This touches on one of his classic moments. Okay. Uh, 1952, um, this man performed the first figure skating triple jump in competition. <laughs> Do you know what his name was? Dick Button. It was Dick Button. Mm -hmm. And when uh, he would commentate, if he would commentate, is that a thing? A comment is fine. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. <laughs> he would say, look at that. When he was... Uh, he did? Oh, oh yes. Yeah, the, the, oh, uh, yeah. He especially oh, liked to yeah. watch the uh, women skaters. Uh, the, the, your Peggy Fleming. Your, oh, he did? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, by the way, what's uh, green in skates? What? Peggy, Peggy Flem. Flem. <laughs> One of the classics, if you know who Peggy Fleming is, and you you're taking an Alka-Seltzer right now. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, Dick Button is his actual name. Mm. The old I understand he got it in uh, in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, on a spring break in uh, college. Yeah, it was either Dick or a patient Button, zero. They, 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 they called him Button Dick, and he, he turned it around. Uh, let's see, um, uh, birthdays. Yeah. Uh, Rue McClanahan. Oh, Golden oh. Girls. We love her. Blanche Devereaux. Yes. Hmm. Um, and 1946, Alan Rickman. Love him. Oh, yeah. God. One of the great I bad guys. Actually, though, he's Rickman. great in love. I benefit from the class. He's a bad, bad guy. guy. I am Severus Snape. Uh, yeah. He's, yep. he, he, he played a really good bad guy. Alan Rickman. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, uh, 1955, Kelsey Grammer. Uh, oh, Frazier. Mm -hmm. yeah, grammar, he's good at apparently not spelling, judging by the way grammar is spelled. Mm -hmm. It is incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> Um, David Foster Wallace, born in 1962. The uh, sadly, he's gone. The author. Remember this guy? He wore the uh, the bandana all the time. Sure, one of the greatest writers of all time, I'd say. Because he was a crip. Uh, I don't <laughs> think he was part of any. Oh, that's how we wore the bandana. Gang. Oh, I was missing four. <laughs> you were. Yeah, I shouldn't yeah. have passed that along then. Uh, happy birthday, Jennifer Love Hewitt, born in '79. Oops. A love sandwich. A long neck, right? She's got um, a long neck. I think she's gorgeous. It's Audrey Hepburn's daughter, right? Um, Get a look at her neck. <laughs> the, the great uh, writer, actor, performer, comedian Jordan Peele, born in 1979. Um, Very talented. Yeah, made some great movies. But right now it's uh, time to review what we learned on today's show with Chick McGee. Time now for Things We Learned, brought to you by Popeyes. This past Sunday, Popeyes fans watched the perfect pairing of Popeyes commercial. During the big game and their new lineup of crispy on the outside, juicy on the inside, wang. <laughs> Order any of their five delicious flavors today There's at Popeyes. A, a, audio of me enjoying them. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's good. I can sing. Popeyes has wings. Christy uh, Lee did not <laughs> wash her hair today, uh, nope. making Tom say she was a dirty girl. Yeah. Ooh, like that. Pants started our show this morning from Here Come the Mummies. Uh, if you leave prison and get rearrested, do you get your old jail cell and cellmate and prison number back? It apparently. depends, we've learned. Nope. Well, no. That's pretty much no. no. Yeah, no. the answer is pretty much no. no. The answer is no. Well, I've got a letter saying that's not correct. Well, that ah. guy, thanks whatever your name is for telling him that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it, it depends what jail you're in. We oh. did have a, yet today, I don't know how many days in a row this is, but we did have a food-related story, and Tom assumed Josh would be excited about oh, it. He was taco. right this time. Choco Taco. Choco yeah. Taco. The Choco Taco coming back. Thank goodness for that. Yep. 
Uh, Bob Marley movie's out, doing well at the box office. And remember, whatever title they've given it, uh, my uh, idea is they put in parentheses, uh, you just played that song. <laughs> one love. And they're making a movie now about each one of the Beatles individually. Yes. Amazing, right? Amazing, he says. <laughs> I, th that seems to me to be a little too much. Josh is not a f fan of airplane seats or airlines in general or anything to do with anything flying in the air. Very dis very uncomfortable. And Tom played the So So Fat song by Josh that we hadn't heard in a while, and I thought I was going to urinate in my trousers. No one. So So Fat. I'm So So Fat. I'm the fattest. I am fat. Nobody's fatter than me. Nobody's fatter than me. All I do, I eat and jerk it and jerk it and eat. Take them panties off and put the salami on. Pack me with the breadstick. Pack me with the breadstick. Pack me with the breadstick. I'm so sad. Pack me with the breadstick. Pack me with the breadstick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, food and sex. Good song. Yeah. Josh wrote it. I mean, <laughs> Ted Bundy's Volkswagen bug, bug is on display in Pigeon Ford, Tennessee. Oh. And if you're a maniac, go look at yeah, it. That's, mm. You sicko. Uh, old Barbie paid us a visit today. Yes. and uh, If you're a maniac, she, go look at it. She wants to be in the Golden Bachelorette. Yeah, cool? she, she sure needs, does. She got, needs a man with a good tongue. If you know what she means. And there's a laboratory somewhere making um, uh, laboratory-grown testicles. Oh, yeah. So, uh, they're busy. They got a lot of balls in the air over there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the guys. The guy was at home, and his, uh, he th there was a noise downstairs. His wife said, go see what it is. He said, no. She goes, oh, come on, grow a pair. Misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> Went back to the lab, and uh, he, he, he grew a pair. Uh, now, um, I'll remind you that this is the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Even though we're not too much to look at, you can also watch the show on our YouTube channel.